Hey, good morning. Good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are. Thank y'all for joining me today. I appreciate it. Boots on the ground. Mm -hmm. hey, hey. What say, man? Boots on the ground. Uh -huh. Uh, I don't have a Wait. It's on the ground. Yeah, <laughs> Thank y'all. I see what David B says. Calvin is usually on time. I normally never catch the start. Hey, thanks for joining me, everybody. We got a lot to talk about, as usual. Uh, I'm waiting on my shirt. I don't do my lives in these anymore. <laughs> okay, guys, I'm back. She messing around with my shirt. How's everybody today? Man, I tell you what, these lockdowns, man, they really starting to get real. They've locked down Manila totally on the ECQ. Um, it's only a matter of time. It's coming for us. Excuse me. I'll wait for a few people to get on here. I'll give some shout outs. Mike C says the real nitty gritty. Yeah. Wonders of Life, David Boot B, Kuma Asta. Yeah, they say um, uh, Kuma Asta Amigo here. Uh, what's up, Hank? I said, Hangley. My favorite name, Guillermo Herbert D. Montoya Hernandez Goldfar. That wins the internet, guys. Yeah, Booby got out of the hospital yesterday. I slept good last night, man. What's up, Bobby G? Good to see you. I don't see the NTZ here yet. Well, that's okay. It ain't going to stop no show. Hey, uh, Smokey Mountain Modeler. Sammy, Sam Champion. I said Sammy Champion. Sorry. <laughs> Hey, I love the child. Yeah, man, she got out of the hospital. I'm so happy. Oh, okay, I see John Wells and Ingram Davis. Yeah, if we're not locked down, guys, Friday we're going to have that Sunshine Shoulders, Moonshine Shoulders happy hour. Booby was in the hospital. That's why I didn't do it. Um, what's up, Luez Martinez? I'm sorry. I, I saw your uh, shout-out last week. Hey, what's going on? Uh, <laughs> Earl Kemp, there ain't no preaching on here, brother. <laughs> Carl Vines, what's up, man? You ran in any established women lately, Carl? That was funny, man. You had me laughing on that. But, yeah, um, I'm going to start out with, you know, 15 million. Uh, well, they've got a goal of, of having 15 million uh Vaccinate, fully vaccinated in, com in the co country by the end of the month. And they've ramped it up over here, guys. It's, they're doing, uh, according to Manila Times, 600 to 700,000 vaccinations a day. And I can bear witness to that, really, because I got my first dose. I was shocked. But the official numbers is this. 12.4 million have the first dose. 10.7 million are fully uh, vaccinated. So, you know, that's good news, but the bad news is over 11,000 cases Saturday. It's been a spike. Uh, and, you know, they contributed that to the Delta variant, man. It's, it's coming. It's coming, man. It's raging. They gave a estimate of 18,000 a day on the low end, 30,000 on the high end. And they're so angry with this research group over here that 
you know, that warned them a long time ago, say, hey, it's coming, get ready. To... Now they're starting to uh, investigate the group. You know, they're angry, man, cause, but the group was right on the money. They told, you know, but they're trying to say there's no doctors, uh, there's no scientists or anything like that in there, but there's mathematicians. These are pretty smart people, man, and they told the Philippines to get ready for the surge. The government kept uh, denying it, and now it's here, guys. Uh, a piece of bad news. This is crazy, but remember, we're in the Philippines. Nothing makes sense here. It never will make sense, and it doesn't have to make sense because we're in the Philippines. But three people, including a nurse, were arrested for selling 300 doses of the coronavac vaccine. This is real vaccine. They took it from, well, they had been taking it from these vaccination sites, selling it to these um, Philippine uh, offshore gambling operators, which are mostly Chinese. So once the authorities got wind of it, they set up an entrapment operation and got them, man. I mean, you know, it's pretty, uh, it's getting pretty desperate over here, man. Uh, what's up, DG, Jeffrey Tatter? Uh, Bill Rickman says USA just shipped 2 billion vaccine doses to the Philippines. Are you sure? Man, that's a lot. Uh, okay, Carl Vons, he's locked down. So, yeah, you're up in Manila, right? Man, yeah, they locked down. That ECQ, that's the highest you can get. Uh, they can't see you, honey. So come on out here in them short shorts. I've got a video coming out talking about goodbye Philippines. I'm going to miss you. I'm going to miss these booty shorts. Hey, Chuck Smash says, hey, Sir Calvin, I'm so happy to hear about your daughter. Yeah, I slept good last night. What's up, Frank Ellis? Ron Bizzle? Good morning, Yusuf. Amar Habib, LeVon White's on here with us. Yeah, guys, it's been a lot of talk. Okay, y'all asked me for the update on Rick and Valley. So I do an update, and then you take and, and, and bust my head. I mean, nobody got it. It's about the children, guys. That's the only reason I helped to begin with. It's not about Ricky and Valet. I see people like Ricky and Valet every single day, you know. And had it not been for me seeing those kids in that old pedicab of his, I'd have gave him 100 pesos, and that would have been the end of the story. But we're trying to give these children, man, a chance. Rick and Ballard have a place to stay only because we took the kids off the street. We didn't take Ricky and Ballard off the street. Don't miss that. It's the same with Donna Faye and baby Denise. We built that house for baby Denise. We didn't build it for Donna. Okay. You cannot look. I'm, I'm, I'm an insurance agent for 18 years. United States Navy veteran. Been around the world. And when you're in the military, you be around a lot of people, man. I know this for a fact. It's hard to help adults, but, and you usually can't help adults, but you can help children, man. And that's what it's all about, man. You know, and another thing I wanted to bring up before I, I forget, you know, other than the fact that it's easy to criticize and do nothing, but a lot of times we misinterpret people over here. Um, their actions, their words, their body language. We misinterpret it, guys. You know, I kind of agree with my girlfriend that, that Rick and Violet, they're, they're kind of slow, you know, uh, and there may be some mental issues there. But, I mean, but to jump to all the conclusions that y'all jumped to, man, it just, was, it just wasn't um, called for, really. I mean, they're who they are. See, this is the reason why I don't normally specifically help people because you don't know who you're helping, especially when it comes to adults. Look at the Donna Faye and maybe Denise situation. If you think, if you go on Donna Faye's uh, Facebook page, if you think that's the same Donna Faye that I helped over there 
you're wrong. And I, I, I like to think we had something to do with that. But see, I don't know who I'm dealing with. But I know whenever there's children involved, man, you know, the tragedy is not being used. The tragedy is not helping the kids, you know. And so that's really what the Ricky and Valley situation is about. They got food and stuff over there because we bought food and stuff for the kids. They're alone for the ride. I probably can't help them. They're, the help they need is probably beyond, not probably, but it is beyond the help that we're offering. So guys, don't, don't miss that. I'm not trying to help grown people over here because that was the case, man. The, the need is too great over here. You won't be able to do it. All right. But when kids is involved, I get, um, you know, I get, you know, my thinking starts getting kind of messed up because I see my kids out there. See, when I saw Rick's them kids at first, they didn't have any clothes on in that little pedicab. Then the next time I saw them, the little girl was hugging the sidewalk trying to get comfortable, man. You know, so, yeah. And, you know, to the guy who says I'm trying to exploit Rick and Valid for views, come on, man. I'm not even going to address that. I've got almost 500 videos. If you think I need to do that for videos, then you don't know me. You know, I would never do that. I don't have to do it. I've got so many, so much more content in me. It could last me for another five years, and I would never take a day off. But I would never do that. But I just wanted to get that out of the way, guys. It's, we're doing this for the kids. I agreed to sponsor them for a year to give those kids a chance. Not them. They may be beyond my help, and they probably are. And if they're using drugs, it's none of my business. But I'm not coming to them from some spiritual mountaintop, man, like a lot of you guys seem to be doing, man. Uh... MR says the bad news is Sinovac is only 51% effective. Not this Coronavac. It's a lot more effective than that. They've got two Sinovacs, MR. Remember, I mentioned that to y'all before. One is from the government, and then one is from the business side over there. What's up, Robert Sanford? Buffalo Dan says, God, help the Philippines. Yeah, help the world, man. Mr. Chip, what's up? Brad Jones, I see you, Freddie Sanders. But yeah, you know, and then in my situation, it's like damned if I do, damned if I don't. If I don't do the update, you know, <laughs> damn me, then if I do the update, I'm exploiting them. So, hey, guys. Yeah, right. Hey, C.D. Hill, what's up? He said, what's up, Calvin? I'm glad that your daughter's feeling better. And I was sincerely praying for her, and I still am. And for you and the rest of the family, too. Thank you, brother. I appreciate that. Um, Daryl Daryl says three million. John Gomez, good morning, brother. I appreciate your help and support, man. That's real talk. Okay, now the we'll talk about the subject a little bit, guys. Uh, how to avoid the financial ambush that's waiting for you in the Philippines. A lot of you don't even, you've never been here before, so you don't know that there's a financial ambush waiting for you when you get over here. And it seems innocent. But what it really is, is the girl that you've been chatting with is waiting for you to come over here. She's already spending your money for you before you come over here. There's some red flags I'm going to give you to look out for and some things that you can do. You know, uh, <coughs> Because one thing you got to do is you have to have an itinerary over here. Don't just come over here and let her be in charge of everything. Have a, a general itinerary of some places you want to go and see, and some restaurants you might want to see, some cultural things you want to see. Otherwise, she's going to start spending your money for you, and I'm going to tell you how. First of all, she's going to try this friends and family plan on you, and you have to keep that at a minimum. Do that one time. Take the friends and family to the beach, uh, you know, Battle of China, whatever. Do that one time, if one time, okay? 
But she's going to try that friends and family plan. Another thing she's going to try is, and this is a red flag, when she starts trying to get you to go to these fancy restaurants, fancy resorts, and different places like that, that she knows that she's never been to, would never go to unless you're here. That's a red flag, guys. Don't let that happen. It's best that, you know, she show you the real Philippines. You know, don't don't get touristy on me. Don't go tourist on me. See, when they go tourist on you guys, that's a red flag. Hey, John Gomez, thanks for the super chat. He said, keep doing you, Calvin. Not everyone can be aggressive as you with helping the needy. I can relate. Yeah, thank you, uh, Daryl. You know, uh, it's just that when people think that I'm exploiting people and then they say, hey, you can't help them. They tell me how to help people. That's when I kind of get, it kind of gets under my skin because I'm like, it's easy for you to say you're speaking from that spiritual hilltop over there in America and, you know, you're doing nothing. Uh, it's easy to judge and criticize, man. You know, but when it comes to the kids, that's all I'm doing. I'm just helping helping the kids. But yeah, look out for some of these uh, red flags, guys, when she turns tourist on you. Uh, David B. said, Quezon Province getting locked down. Yeah. Okay, Carl Vons. He said, yeah, I'm in uh, Mandala, young Manila. Oh, okay. What'd you say, huh? Say it. Oh, Mandala, young. Okay. Thank you for that. So, but Dundee's coming to us from uh, Melbourne, Australia. He says, yo, Calvin, we're locked down again for the sixth time. Wow. Hey, uh, what's this? C-Dub. C-Dub 76. He said, glad I was able to catch the live, man. Glad you could join us, brother. Uh, Grow Old said they're trying to have it open by next summer. I hope they do. Um, to be honest with you, man. Uh for everybody involved, for us, for the locals, for the government, for the economy, man. Bill Rickman said, Google it, Calvin, Moderna vaccine. I, I, I don't doubt you. It's just $2 billion sounded a lot just to send to the Philippines. And the Philippines' goal is to have their, own, their goal now, not, not is 157 million doses. And you're saying the United States sent two billion over here or two billion around the world. That's what I'm saying. Who kept Richie 1969 said, what are the prices on rubber shoes these days in the Philippines? That's before friend. Oh man. <laughs> Ridiculous, brother. That's one of the things I say you better bring with you. Uh because you know I'm a runner. I used to be a runner. And I wear Brooks shoes. And man, just the regular Brooks that you get from um, uh, not the running shoes, but the regular Brooks is going to cost you $140, $150 over here. Uh, it's expensive, man. You know, and but you would think it would be cheap because the Philippines is right over here by South Korea, China, and all the places that make the damn shoes. Excuse my language, but it's not. I mean, it's ridiculous over here. And then you're going to run into this class A rubber shoes if you want to do that. And they're, they're not going to help you. They're going to hurt you, really. What's up, Albert Young? Thank you, brother. He said, God bless you. Um, Jerome Morgan, he says, hello and congratulations to the recovery of your daughter. Yeah, she's recovering, man. And I'm so happy, man. I don't like hospitals. That's where all the sickness and disease is in the hospital. There's a book I, I suggest you to read. It says, How to Get Out of the Hospital Alive. That's a real book. And I would suggest you read that because so many people go in the hospital and never come out. They don't die from what they went in there for. They die from a lot of other stuff, man. Believe it or not. Hey, Doug Carr, what's going on? Good to see you, man. Uh, yeah, Smoky Mountain Modeler, children are the innocent bystanders. They can't pick their parents. And see, it's easy to look at Rick's kids on the videos, but you don't really see how cute these little girls are, man. They will tug at your heart. 
and I think they're sick, man. That's why I want they're, they're going to the doctor tomorrow. I'm going to pay for it and any prescriptions that come behind that. Because I just don't think she's capable of taking care of the kids, man. But at least if I can help them to the point where maybe somebody on the outside in the medical field, the government can look at them and get a hold to them and help them. Then I've done my job, but I want to help them little girls, man. Because you see the little one, y'all hardly ever look into her eyes. First of all, she's got knots all over her head, man. She's got something going on with that. I told them to take her to the doctor a long time ago. But, you know, I, I can't be on them 24 hours a day. They're grown, man, you know. And then her eyes are so light. The pupils are so light. I've never seen anything like it. I hope she's not blind. Uh, yeah, wonders of life. He said, I understand your point. Kids have to be helped. They can't help themselves. And that's where I'm at with that. See, when I took those groceries to Donna Faye the first time, that would have been it, man, had I not saw baby Denise laying there. You know, that would have been it. I would have gave her the groceries and went on about my way. But when I saw that little baby living in those squalid conditions like that, we rebuilt that house and gave Donna that store and gave all that money and all the help that we gave her because of we gave it to baby Denise, really. She was a benefactor of that. We didn't do it for Donna. You know, I can't help grown people, man. You know, they got to help themselves. <laughs> Sam Chappell said, Calvin, I heard this song this morning by Love Won't Let Me Wait. Major Harris, the song is jealousy, so appropriate for those haters out there. Yeah, when the guy says that I was trying to exploit Rick and Violet for views and subscribers, come on, man. Sunshine Shoulders don't have to do that. I would never do that anyway. I can talk about a million things, but there's people, there's some of my subscribers who help me with Rick and Violet and their situation who are emotionally invested in them. They said, hey, Calvin, can you give us an update? And I told you a long time ago, I wasn't going to keep going over there. I have to, you know, because I would feel uncomfortable myself, you know, but I'm not trying to exploit anybody. Hey, LeVon White, thank you for the super chat. And he said, in the, in the hospitals, wrong limbs are removed, man. People have had brain surgery on the wrong side. Absolutely, man. Uh, and it happened not too long ago. A guy goes in, he's got diabetes, and you can look this up. I believe it happened in Cleveland. And, of course, they was going to have to remove his leg. Well, hell, they removed the wrong leg. So they had now, yeah, so now they got to remove both his legs. That's not funny, honey. She's laughing. <laughs> but it's true. This is the kind of stuff that goes on in these hospitals. I don't like them, man. I don't trust them. Um, hey, QM, Q Mocha, 1103280, say I agree with that, brother. Help the kids, man. And that's what I'm doing. Rick and Val is on, alone for the ride. They're off the street because I took them kids off the street. I didn't take Rick and uh, Violet off the street. I'm sorry. I can't help that. Hey, uh, what's that? Maddie, J. Andy Johns. He said, morning, Calvin. How are you? Glad I made the live, man. I'm glad you could join us. What's up, Cone Ranger? He says, aloha, John. Happy to hear about your daughter, Calvin. Yeah, we're going to have that Sunshine Shoulders, Moonshine Shoulders live stream on Friday if we're not locked down. My own Buntag. <laughs> Heather Feather says these haters are out of pocket, Calvin. You're doing good work, and the world needs more kindness like you've been doing. Thank you, Heather. I appreciate that. You know, um, I really don't pay him no attention, but this guy knows who he is. He never got anything good to say. Uh, hey, Edgar Castillo, he said, love what you do, Cal. Appreciate you. Retired 2019. But, yeah, we got to help the kids, man. Um, MR says, later, Calvin, too much drama. Okay. Take care, brother. See you later. Um, yeah, hit the like button, guys. I think guys like MR come over here just to try to get under my skin. But, see, that don't work anymore, guys. Hey, Ron Bills, he says, hi, Calvin. That's wonderful news. 
about the baby of yours. See, we, we, we're an adult channel here, guys. We talk about the 360. You know, if all you want to talk about is booty beaches and bombshells, man, there's plenty of channels on here for that, man. But don't come over here trying to tell me what to talk about and all that. Uh, Frank Ellis says, what are they talking about leaving? They don't like the place. They were homeless. No. See, what they were saying, y'all couldn't understand it, but my girlfriend was translating it. They said that the landlord is giving them problems, but she's probably giving them problems because they're over there arguing and fighting is what I'm thinking. But that's all it is. What? What's the problem? Huh? Tell me. What? That's another thing. This is everyday for them. The rice cooker. She's what? Because they're using the rice. Oh, okay. They're saying that the lady is giving them a problem because they're using the rice cooker, which supposedly, I guess, runs up the electricity because the electricity is uh is free there, so. See, that's the kind of stuff I don't know about, guys. Uh, the, but the type of problems that you run into over here. Uh, now, I don't know how they're supposed to cook their rice. And she doesn't want them to cook on the fire in the house. So I guess they want to make a fire outside. I don't know, but that's what it is, Frank. They're having problems with their landlord. They said the landlord is on their case. Did you just... If you look at the video, you see that little bitty tiny uh, uh, rice cooker. You know, the rice cooker over here is like a necessity over here. You have to have it. Um, Jeffrey Taylor says, you did the right thing by helping the kids. Man, I hope I did. Miss Chip says, you have kids, you have a common ground. Yeah, see, and either some of you guys are just so heartless and just so cruel and evil that you don't deserve to come to a place like the Philippines, man. And even if you make it over here, you're not going to enjoy yourself because they're not going to roll out the red carpet for people like y'all. Surely you could see that it was more than just Rick and Valley, guys. Come on. Uh, Leonard Lund says, hey, Calvin from Houston, Texas, you're better than that. You're not exploiting anything. I know I'm not. I mean, it's just this is their way of punching me in the stomach. That's all they can do. Uh, <laughs> Bob Dylan said, two billion, that's 10 per person. See, yeah. Now, that would be 20 per person. There's 100 and, just say 100 million people over here, man. That's a lot of, of vaccines. They wouldn't need that many. They wouldn't even need a billion. They wouldn't even need 500 million. That would be a waste of, of, of all waste. And I'm not doubting you, William. I'm just saying, I don't know why they would be sending. Uh, but but here's what Harold Kemp said. The United States is sending 3 million doses of Moderna's COVID-19 vaccine to the Philippines. And see, that sounds more like, more like it. Uh, right there. 2 billion. That's a lot. JLM says, all hell seemed to a, a break loose when I wrote down my only six month goals and put it on my wall. Well, see, that's what happened. But remember, JLM, that's the universe. Remember, they're shifting out the pretenders from the real people. See, um, remember, the, if you saw my video on day 36 of my house, you see that guy sifting that sand. But that's what the universe does to people like you, Jim. When you start getting serious, writing down your goals and stuff like that, they're going to say, hey, is this J JLM guy for real? Is he, is he realizing memorats? See? Yeah, Wonders of Life. Uh, Brooks and Sacconi are good running shoes. And they'll cost you a fortune over here. But I haven't seen Sacconi over here. Brooks is very expensive over here. Um, hey, Michael Dawsonville, he says, hey, Calvin, what's up, brother? Keep doing what you're doing. Don't listen to the haters. That's all they're good for. We're praying for you and your family. Thank you, man. 
Oh, uh, okay. Um, okay, Kona Ranger. He says, no, the U.S. donated $2 billion to COVAX to buy 500 million doses uh, to send here. Okay. <laughs> Clayton uh, Mary said, Bob Dylan has a blonde with boobs as his thumbnail. It sounds good. Okay, uh, Q Dub seventy six. It's actually three million vaccines at the U.S. Center of Philippines. I just checked. Yeah, it sounds more like it. But the Philippines has kicked it up a notch, man. They're really vaccinating people, and there's no argument over here of, of between anti-vaxxers and vaxxers. I mean, there's no argument over um, uh, mass. There's none of that over here. That's why I like one of the things I'm gonna miss about this place. Uh, David B. said, my knockoff flops lasted me three years before I threw them away. Yeah, because they're making them out of tar rubber, David B. Yeah, they, 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 you know, they, they'll probably last you forever. You know, but, I, you know, I don't know how. And they're pretty comfortable because I got some over here. They're not made out of regular rubber. They're made out of tar rubber. They, they melt their tar down and make them. <laughs> but remember, they've got to be good because y'all saw my video with the house. They work, they do construction work, man, in flip flops. Man, these guys are, these are true gangsters over here. You know, when you're building houses in flip flops, if you look back on my live streams and my uh, videos. I tell you, man, Filipinos do everything in flip flop. They'll get married in flip flops if they could. They're walking down the aisle with a tuxedo and some damn flip flops if they could. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, Maddie, J, J. Anthony Johns. He said, "Hey, Calvin, have your girl emphasize on watching the water she's using while bathing your daughter." She does really. We we were using bottled water. They came and got it. But they they let their guard down sometimes, you know, and they'll use that regular water. But no, that's why I bought that water, that extra water was for Booby to take her baths in from day one. Uh, Alexander Neverman said, Calvin, you are God sent to those you help. I just try to follow the spirit, uh, Alexander Neverman, and had I not read the book by Sheila E., I would never know what you're talking about. But that was one of Prince's uh, names he used to use for himself, Alexander Neverman. And I finished that Sheila E. book. I was going to go to the Beatles, but I think I'm going to do this now. And I'm going to read this chicken soup uh, for the military wife's soul. 100 stories to touch the heart and rekindle the spirit because of what I was going through with my daughter, man. I was scared. It scared me with booby. I thought it was the big C. I thought it was cancer. There's a lot of cancer over here, man. Uh, Ted B says, pity I didn't meet you in 2015. Could have saved me a lot of aggravation. I was ambushed financially by a woman that wasn't exactly forthcoming with the truth. I was glad to be on that plane home. Yeah, see, thank you, Ted B, for, for sharing this with us. Because people think I'm making this stuff up. I'm not. I've been ambushed financially myself. They want to take you to these, you know, because you don't know, you know, and you're not really thinking clearly right away. You know, you're, you're, your mind is on the booty, the beaches, and the bombshells. So when she takes you to this fancy, uh, man, I went to... Um, let me tell you, don't ever go here and eat. They got me good. When you land into Mockton, the Mockton Shrine, okay, when you go to see the Mockton Shrine, go there, take pictures and everything like that, but don't eat at that restaurant over there. Me, my son's mother, and of course, you know, because the taxi driver, we wanted him to stay there with us, We didn't, you know, because it's hard getting a taxi back there. Just the bill was Almost 5,000 pesos, man. And this was in 2010. Yeah, because you go in there and you pick out what you want. They charged me 1,000 pesos just to cook the damn food, man. I didn't even know it. 
it was almost 5,000 pesos. Man, I was sick, but I didn't have no choice. I had to pay it. So don't ever eat at the Moctan Shrine. When you go back there, there's going to be some restaurants behind there. Don't eat there, man. But thank you, Atea B. See, people seem to think I'll be making this stuff up, man. I'm trying to help y'all. You're going to get ambushed, man, over here if you're not careful. Because the first thing is that old friends and family plan. You know, they want to take, uh, want, you know, and everybody wants to make an excuse. Oh, well, she, she doesn't know you and she wants to feel safe. Well, hell, what about me? I'm the one coming 8,000 miles. I want to feel safe, too. I don't know her either. And I'm surely not going to feel comfortable around 20 people if I'm not going to feel comfortable around her. And then I'm surely not going to be feeling comfortable when I get that 15,000 peso bill. Yeah, man, you know, you will know you got the right one because you're going to take her. She's going to take you to places that she normally goes. She's not going to take you to this fancy. She's not going to say, uh, even though the Pancake House over here is one of my favorite places, she's not going to take you there. She's going to more likely take you to Inner the chicken place, uh, you know. Uh, hey, Biggie B says, hey, Cal from Guam. Sorry you have to deal with lots of haters. Yeah, you know, I've, I, I ignore them, Biggie B, but see, they... I'm held to a different standard, man, you know, and I'm not just saying that it's true because if you look at just see all they're doing is putting us in a microcosm. There's thousands. I'm ranked 10,000 in the Philip among Filipino vloggers. I'm 10,000. So they pick and choose who they want to come after. But my channel, man, is very, very, um, what I want to call it. It's just, you know, it's mild, man, compared to what's out there, guys. I promise you. Hey, Alfred Dunlap. He said, get those lights up. Uh, what's up, Derek Greenway? Uh, <laughs> uh, Henry uh, Pirate says, I shouldn't, but I laughed too at the wrong leg story. Like, what the hell? And that's why I don't like hospitals either. Yeah, it's it happens all the time, man. Wrong diagnosis. How many times? And I'm going to tell you something that's so scary over here. It happened in Michigan. Google it if you don't believe me. I say I'm a Medicare benefits representative. I don't work for WellCare. I mean, I don't work for Medicare. I represent the companies who, I have, who have a contract with Medicare. Where there was a doctor... I mean, this is a slimy son of a gun. He was <laughs> diagnosing, you know, he was falsely diagnosing his clients with cancer, putting them through chemotherapy, charging Medicare out the butt. And none of these people had cancer, man. They do this kind of stuff, you know, and it makes people like me afraid to go to the doctor. Look it up if you don't believe me, the, 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 um, the judge gave him a life sentence. Said, I should give you the death penalty for putting people through that, man. He put them through, I mean, not just two or three or five, hundreds of people, man. He told them that they had cancer. That's enough right there to freak you out. Then he puts them through that expensive chemotherapy treatment so he can build the Medicare, man. He made millions of dollars, man, at their expense. So I'm going to tell you something. It's crazy, guys. But that stuff's out there. Uh, James Lyon says, yes, be good, but don't take that good guy mentality blindly or else you will be taken advantage of. Yeah, they, they will start spending your money for you before you even get her under the best intentions. They're not even trying to cheat you, but she's going to make the plans for you if you don't already have the plan. If, if she says, oh, we're going to the beach over here with the family, blah, blah, blah. It's going to be, especially if you're in Cebu, it's going to be one of them rundown beaches with brown sand, trash everywhere. The water's brown, full of people, you know, and you end up spending 15,000 pesos. Now, you don't want that. 
He said, look, we when I get there, I'm going to rest up one or two days. Then we're going to Barakai. We're going to Siki Hall. We're going somewhere. We're not going to the city uh, beach. I'm sorry. Yeah, Clayton, Mary, I can't imagine the rice cooker uses too much power. She needs to loosen up a bit. Yeah. Oh, man, I tell you. But you running that kind of stuff. Let, let me repeat myself once again. Nothing makes sense over here, Clayton, Mary. It never will. And it doesn't have to because you're in the Philippines, but this is the kind of stuff you run into. Remember, I had to replace, I took them a, I took them a fan over there. And can't use that fan. We had to go and get them those little bitty ceiling fans because of the electricity. <laughs> That's the kind of stuff you run into, man. Uh, yeah, wonders of life, but he says, I guess foreigners must be the signal for them to get a once-in-a-lifetime experience. And they are going to get a once-in-a-lifetime experience just from being with you, but you spend your money. Don't let them spend it for you. And a lot of times they do it innocently. It's not with any bad intentions, but that's exactly what they're doing. They say, oh, this may be, they don't trust that we're coming here to begin with. And they really don't trust that you're coming back. So they say, you know, we're going to, you know, we're going to practice this un unspoken agreement. Okay. <laughs> A man used to say, Calvin, can I be your neighbor and you be my sensei? Man, I tell you, I'm just giving you my experience, man. This happened to me. And man, you says, that's why I'm telling you. What's up, travel, Mike? Yeah, uh, I love the chime, brown sand, brown water, brown trout. It's all in there, and then you're going to end up spending 15000 man. Now, you better go to – take. let's go to Palawan instead. Uh, Brian Nichols said, why is the water brown? You don't want to know. <laughs> See, look at Bob Dylan. He tell, he, he, he's bearing witness to what I'm saying. He said, some girls took me to the city beach in the vow. The water was like I was in the Mississippi muck. Yeah, but if you come to other places, like even if you come here, they've got a little city beach in Calatrava. It's nice, though. You know, it's not the, the, the sand is just naturally brown, but it's not dirty. It's clean. But you go to Cebu and them city beaches there, man, I wouldn't let my dog go swimming in there, man. And that's a fact. Hey, hey, Rich Scales, he says, uh, Hey, Calvin, how's your daughter, man? She's doing great. Well, I was able to sleep last night. I slept all the way through for the first time in a long time. I'm Probably since I've been here. I guess, you know, I hadn't slept in so many days. Frank Ellis said, ain't nobody spending my cash but me. Yeah, but, and they'll do it for you, man. They'll catch you off guard. and Oh, yeah, let me take you over here. And mm -mm, Don't do it. Not only did... Uh, <clears throat> I ended up going there and spending 4000 but uh, we ended up with the family and friends plan. That was another 15000 You know, and see me, I'm looking like I don't want the woman to know that you're breaking me, lady, you know, because I'm trying to impress, you know, and that's the worst. I, that's the first thing I wrote down here. Don't try to impress these women over here, man. That's the worst thing you can do. Okay. You cannot impress them because they've seen it all on Facebook. You know, just let them know that you're just a normal guy, man. You know, they're going to live. They're going to have a, like Wonders of Life said, they're going to have a once in a lifetime experience with you anyway. But the worst thing you could do is try to impress them. If you don't have it, just say you don't have it. But man, she was squeezing my pockets. Boy, she didn't know it. I could hardly breathe. By the time she got, by the time I got on that plane, I was like, whew, I'd never been so happy to leave the Philippines. <laughs> But, but uh, that's that's what I happened to you, man. Because you don't want to, you know, you don't want to look weak in front of their eyes, you know. Because you know they've got high expectations for us, man. But y'all ain't listening to me. Brad Jones said they would catch you at a weak moment. Yeah, you're gonna be weak because you're gonna be so happy, 
to get here. And, you know, once you get out, I'm telling you, man, this is just for me. This is a magical place. Uh, it never gets old to me. I've been here off and on. Mr. Patty, man, he's listening. I've been here off and on for 12 years, okay? 12 years is 12 years. And it's never gotten old to me, man. It just never has. Um, but, yeah, <laughs> Roy Jones said impressed him by saying no. You better say that. Uh, but, man, you know, I was just – I wanted to make such a great impression. I didn't want to let her know, look, I'm, I'm about down to – you know, good thing I'm leaving tomorrow – Cause I'm I'm down to my last few pesos, and man, uh, thank you for the super check. Q Dub seventy six. He said I met my Filipina at the airport. She showed up with her cousin and his wife. She asked me to pay him to drive us around for four days and buy the dinner. Yeah, see that's another way. That Q Dub seventy six is the financial ambush that I'm telling you about. She's already made plans. She's already spending your money for you. I don't need a driver. I get in the damn Jeep me for real. You know, I don't need no damn driver over here. I pay my mother to watch the kids. I, you know, bring them with you. Come on. Hell, we don't need no nanny. But that's type of stuff they do, guys. Oh, yeah. Kona Ranger says, you know, you've got the right girl when she stops you and says, no, that costs too much. Or you try to buy her something and she doesn't want it. See, my girlfriend used to make, my girlfriend I'm with now, she used to make me so mad. You know, I want to be a gentleman. I want to be, you know, the knight in shining armor and buy something. She's not, no, don't buy it. She don't want it. You know. <laughs> Are we talking the tally tonight? Are we taking the tally tonight? Oh, uh, what do you mean as far as A, B, and C? That was a good A, B, and are you, um, do you got enough money right now to retire in the Philippines? B is, are you just coming here on vacation, just waiting for them to open up? Or C, you're just dreaming. It's okay to dream, guys. I used to dream about this place. <laughs> David B says, I'd be like, I'm going for a pack of smokes and bounce. No, it ain't going to be that easy, David. Because you're going to be at the hotel. She ain't going nowhere. And she's not going She's not going to leave your side when you get with her. This is what guys don't understand. You're going to try to get her to go home and say, hey, why don't you go home and check on your mother or your kids or something like that. No. It's not going to happen, guys. That's why I say if you meet a three at the airport, you stuck with that three the whole time, guys. I promise you that. <laughs> Rich Gill says, I love the Philippines, bro. It's my second home, but you are spitting the truth. That's why I love your chats. You keep it real. I'm giving you my experience, Rich, man, and see, you're bearing witness to it. Um, I tell you, man, Phil Pumpkin Joe's Philippine experience says, my wife has always been frugal since the day we met. Thank goodness. Yeah. And see, you, you were fortunate, man, because a lot of women, they do it unconsciously. They say, yeah, I had no telling when I'm going to see this foreigner again. Hell, you know, J.A. said, what's the peso to dollar? I got you, Jay. 50.57 pesos to the dollar. They don't really be trying to do it, but they do it subconsciously. And, man, you end up, that's why I say bring some extra money over here, which money that you thought you wasn't going to spend. You're going to end up spending because, we're men, guys. We see this little beautiful woman. We're going to try to impress her. And that's the first mistake you make. But now you done up the ante. Oh, he's, he's got the money. Instead of you just, you know, go ahead and have your plans. Off. Don't come over and be cheap. That's not what I'm saying. This is the worst place to be cheap. This is the Philippines. Okay. Don't come over here pinching pennies. But I'm saying be in control of your itinerary and your wallet. Because she will happily spend your money for you. Long before you get over her, she's already made plans. I remember I bought my wife a phone, right? Now, this is in 2010. Now, my wife had one of them little 2G phones, you know, nothing. So I said, okay, I'm going to buy you a phone. I was gonna, in 2010, 4,000 pesos for a phone was a lot of money. 
But here was the mistake. She had one of her friends with her. So now she wants a phone for 11, that costs 11,000. Mm -mm. I end up getting a one for 2,500. It made me so mad. One of them take it or leave it deals. Cherry Mobile, I believe. Yeah, I did. I got a Cherry Mobile. I was so angry. Uh, Cause the friend was influencing her. Uh, no, this is the one you want, girl. That costs more than the phone I had at the time. Eleven thousand. You sleeping on the dirt floor in the damn squatters area, next to the river, and you want eleven thousand peso phone? You know, but you know, because she thought money grew on trees, man. I had to tell her it don't. Hey, travel Mike. Thanks for the super chat. He said my friend bought his girl a bag of horse feed. And a pocket knife for Valentine's. I asked why he, why did you do that? He said, if I buy a nice things, she'll expect it always. Yeah, I, I see what you're saying, and that's what happens if you come in here with that attitude. I'm going to impress her, and it's only the best for you, baby. Then you're going to have to do that for the rest of your life, and and she's going to hold you to that. Anything less, and you're going to have a headache on your hand. But yeah, that damn Mockton Shrine. If you go there, it's a nice place to visit. Take you a picture by the big Mockton Shrine. But don't eat in that restaurant, man. It's going to cost you. It cost me almost 5000 I mean, I was sick, man. I couldn't believe it. I ain't going to lie. Uh, uh, Frank L said, get a flip phone. See, I told you a guy that messaged me. He says, you know, they never met the girl before. He said, yeah, Cal, I'm going to buy my girl a phone so we can stay in touch. You know, that same spiel they give you. Uh, uh, you think uh, this uh, 11, it was 11 when the 11s came out, 50,000 pesos. I said, you crazy. Her house don't even cost 50,000 pesos. And you're going to spend 50,000 on a cell phone so she can take it right over there and pawn it. And then go and buy her a $1,500 phone, used phone at that. Uh, <laughs> John Williams says, never take friends shopping with you and your wife. It should just be you and your wife. John, that's great advice. And But see, that's a, a, an advice my father gave me years ago. I was 16 years old. Going to get my first car, by the way. At 16 now, I was working with him. Staying with him for the summer of Cincinnati. But I bought my two friends with me. And every car I picked out, they're laughing. Oh, I don't get that. So guess what? We ended up leaving the lot without a car. And boy, was, was my father mad when we got home. He said, "Don't you? whenever you go to do business, don't you ever take anybody with you. Whether it's filling out an application, buying a car, on a date. Okay? Don't do it. Douglas Mack, he said, my girlfriend's brother-in-law from Cavite picked her and I in Angley City. Dropped me off at Nia, took her back to Angley City, then back home to Cavite for 3,700 pesos. Yeah. See, that is a financial ambush, brother. And whenever something like that happens, don't fall for this, oh, just give me what you want to give me. No, before you get in that car, that tricycle, or whatever it is, you get that money, you get you get that settled up front. It happened to me here with that old oh, oh, just give me what I want. Okay, well, here's 200 pesos then. Now nah, he wants 500, see? Yeah. Don't fall for that, man. Get in, before you get in that taxi, that car, or whatever it is, you, you hammer that money out right immediately. And that's a fact. Oh, okay, Douglas Mack. He said, oh, I didn't mean that. I was very satisfied. Oh, okay, so you're saying that was a deal. Oh, okay, well, hell. Oh, that's not a deal, man. There's no way in the world. Oh, well, I guess it is. If you're going to go by the meter, but if it's just a regular, you said it was her brother or brother-in-law because Man, even if it was his own car, see, 3700 that's almost a month's pay for him. Yeah, he done went up and down that highway every damn day for you, 
and you give him 3700 at the end of the month, he'd have been happy. Yeah, you were happy. I bet he was overjoyed. David B. said, and no refunds. That's right. See, Rick Nam said that they want to move. Now imagine me going over there and trying to get four months refund from that lady. It'll be cheaper for her to have somebody kill me. And that's probably what she would do if I went over there and tried to get a 12,000 peso refund during a pandemic, by the way. Uh, hell, she's just going to give somebody two or 3,000 to get rid of me. Okay, doesn't smack, I thought so. And I'm not saying it was, and I'm just saying that um, that's a lot of money for one day's you know, not even a but a couple of hours. <laughs> Amusia says, Dexter, are you a next pet? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, he would be considered a next pet. He said, man, I'm glad I met my Filipino wife in Texas. Uh, now, how did she get there? Now, if she grew up there, it's different. Or uh, maybe she came over with a family like Lynn San Diego 102. She came there as 15, 14 or 15. With her family. Oh, okay, Douglas Mac. I see. I see what you're saying. He said it was worth it to me to spend a little more time with her. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Smoky Mountain Molly said, any downside of using grab for a lift to the Hotel Calvin? Uh, no. Only if it's a short trip. That's the only time the taxi is cheaper than a grab is a short trip. But uh, any other time, no, there's no downside to that grab because now, you know, these, they got so many games they playing with these taxis, man, especially in Manila. Uh, Brad Jones said next pet Allen. Yeah, man, I don't like those next pets. And I'm not calling Dexter next pet. But once you meet one over there, you'll know he's, you know, he's, he's living, he's enjoying the fruits of somebody else's labor. And I know y'all going to say, are oh, you a hater? No, I'm not, and it's not his fault. Yeah, but, you know, don't brag on your Filipino when you would, you don't even have a passport. You would have never gone over there to get her. You're fortunate. You're lucky that you were able to get something for nothing, basically. You know. A cow Devin says, Rick feeling ungrateful. No, I really don't know. See, that's the thing. I'm glad you asked that. Cal, because I don't really know Rick and Valley, and that's the the, the risk you po that that you run when you help grown people like that. I wasn't helping him and Valley; I was helping their kids because you don't know people over here. the The need is so great, you don't, you know, you couldn't help every grown up you saw over here. But when I saw those kids, um. Uh, See, they're, they're alone for the ride. You know, once those kids is okay and some and you know, and somebody from the outside takes a look at that direction and says, Hey, we need to step in and help them, then I've done my job. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh hey says travel vlogs, what's going on? I'm sorry I didn't shout you out last time. Now, what kind of treatment did you have on your face, Seth? That looked pretty painful to me. Uh, Boonan says, I seen a YouTube video implying that foreigners, Americans, are allowed in the Philippines if they are willing to do the 10-day quarantine. Well, not as tourists. If you've got a valid visa, 13A, 9A, SRV, student visa, uh, work visa, even if you've got a ballot buying visa, meaning you're, you and your Filipino wife are at home now and y'all come to the Philippines together, you can get in. But just as a tourist, no, you can't do it. Um, yeah, John Gomez, he says, I can't wait for the PI to open. And it, it, this is a place, man, that... I hope everybody that's a able to come here can come here. Uh, but I know that a lot of y'all are dreaming. And it's okay. Oh, okay, Seth's travel vlog. She says laser treatment, face treatment. Oh, okay. So are you satisfied with it? Is that one of the processes 
of healing. Is that what that is? Hey, Travel Mike, thanks for that super chat. He said, my first trip to PI, Manila, I think. The taxi charged me $30 to take me to the departure terminal to go to Cebu. How do you get a taxi at the airport, Cal? I use the white taxis. I stand in the long line. Stay away from those private cars. I don't care how impatient you are. I don't care how tired you are. And, you know, the yellow taxis are going to cost you a little bit more. Really a lot more. Okay. So just go ahead and stand in the line to take the regular white taxi. That's what I do. But remember, Mike, you could have taken, because as long I've been coming since 2009. I don't know how long you've been coming. They've got a shuttle that will take you to the other uh, from Terminal 1, 2, 3, and et cetera, back and forth like that. Hey, Ken Burrow, he says, hey, Calvin, I've been watching your channel for a while. Keep up the good work. Thank you, uh, Ken. I appreciate you, brother. Uh, Pumpkin Joe's Philippine Experience said, I was dreaming of Thailand for four years, ending up in the Philippines instead. And see, that's one of the things about setting your goals high. See, if you set your goals high, if you said, say, I want a million dollars in two years, and at the end of two years, you don't have a million dollars, but you have 600,000, you're like, well, hell, I'll take that. That's you, uh, Pumpkin Joe. Okay, Lonnie Franklin, he said, I'm looking forward to coming in February. I hope you can get in here, man. Yeah, Wonders of Life said, pay more to be safe with that grab. Yeah, now on a short trip, I don't mind taking a taxi, but anything else, I've got to go with the grab. MJB in the P2B says, sorry, I don't take taxis. I use grab out of jeepney. Hey, Sean Richardson says, yo, Sunshine, just saw some idiots talking smack about you and P. The hell with them. You're only trying to help. More power to you. Yeah, you run into that, you know. Uh, it comes with the territory, brother. Thank you. Hey, Gil Bellamy, what's going on in Texas? Okay, Cal Devon says, pass it along, Cal. The Vegas trip is on. August 13th to 15th, he says, uh, I will meet and greet whomever shows up. Meet me at New York, New York Hotel. Thanks, Cal, because I forgot to bring that up last time. Mr. Steel Palm says, easy to be too generous in the Philippines. Yeah. And it sets you up for that uh, financial ambush. If you don't uh, remember, go back and watch my video. No is the default answer over here. Don't be afraid to say no over here because if you don't, man, you're going to go home like me, you know. My pockets was on life support, man. I was, I never been, uh, usually I'm sad when I leave the Philippines. I was never so happy to get out of this place, man. I mean, really, man, I was literally uh, had enough money when I got back to the States uh, to catch a taxi home. Uh, Stanley Jones said, Kevin, I'm curious, are you building an additional dirty kitchen for the family? Well, you really don't have to build a dirty kitchen for real. All we're going to do is see that the I don't want that uh, the gas grill in the house. It's going to be outside anyway. And what I'll probably do is have a, you know, a metal awning or something put over the back so they won't get wet. That's the dirty kitchen, basically. Danny B, 1954, says, I'm 60 miles from Vegas if you need a place to stay. Wow. Hey, thanks, LeVon White, for the super chat. He says, you have my conscience, man, in the Philippines. A coconut fell through my ceiling and hit me in the head. I woke to see my ex standing by my bed. Oh, my God. Now, that's a nightmare right there. But be careful, uh, LeVon White. Y'all make a joke about that coconut falling out of these trees. Listen, guys, when you get over here, be aware of your surroundings, man. Death by coconut, broken shoulder, 
concussion by coconut. It's real over here, man. Mr. B61 said, can we be real for a minute? Philippines ain't opening soon. Delta spreading. Lambda will show up. Vaccines are starting to be ineffective. The economy is failing in the PI. Stay home and wait to 2025. Wow. Ricky Swift said, good morning, Cal. The COVID-19 is very bad here in the U.S. and everywhere in the world. Stay safe. Uh, safe to stay home. That's what I'm doing. I'm self-quarantining. No one has to tell me. Uh, Ron Bilson said that's too much, LeVon White. Uh, I tell you, but the, them coconuts falling out of trees. I told you all my story. Oh, uh, yeah, MJB and the P2B said, as far as folks concerned, if they don't pay your bills, what they say is irrelevant. It is. You know, that's all it is. Uh, uh, I'm used to a man uses says you're not attracted to tattoos. I don't. I don't wear tattoos. My I've never had a woman over here who has a tattoo. It was very rare when I first started coming here in 2009, the early years. But now it's gotten a lot more popular. They would get those temporary tattoos. You go to a place like Barakai, you know, uh, Bohol. But now they're real, and I don't know. It's just. Well, a little butterfly somewhere on the back here, or maybe on the calf or something like that. But it's, it's getting to be too much of I mean, useless now. <laughs> Brad Jones said, wear a helmet and safety boots. No, man, this is serious, man. I almost took one to the noggin, man. I'm telling you, I wouldn't even be here right now. I mean, I was six inches from the coconut graveyard. I'm not going to lie. Uh, QDub76 says, when I'm in the Philippines, my Filipina negotiates aggressively for almost everything. Sometimes I feel sorry for the vendor. She even got into an argument with the taxi driver, a good Filipina. Yeah, see, you're protected against the ambush. Now, has that been from day one? Because a lot of times they do it innocently. They really, you know, they just take for granted that you know, you have money that's flowing forever. So they do stuff like that. They'll, you know, do that friend, that friends and family plan is probably the most uh, cringy thing that you are going to have experience, man. These people don't know you. They sitting back, just continue just drinking beer like it's no end. They eating rice like, you know, like you own a damn rice farm and, you know, they won't even speak to you. They, you know, <laughs> they think it's the girl's party. It's not even had nothing to do with you. And, you know, that's the financial ambush you want to look out for. Because I promise you, they're not looking at you. They don't even know you exist. <laughs> That's true. I was locked at one sack of rice. Uh, I ended up spending about 17000 on that friends and family thing. And I tell you what, I was angry. And I'm going to tell you, it would have been 16000 But guess what? As an insult to injury, this is a fact, a true story. The person who was cooking the food asked my girlfriend to tell me to give him 1000 pesos for cooking the food. I mean, really, man. Uh Zorba Dundee says, do you eat the rice every day, Calvin? Not every day, but I like rice anyway. You know, I love fried rice at home. So rice is nothing foreign to me. And I'd rather eat rice than bread, to tell you the truth, if I had my choice. I'd rather eat rice than bread. <laughs> yeah, Kona Franklin, they like Ben Franklin instead. But it's funny, man, because they'll be there. It'd be 15, 20 of them, and they're not, they're not paying you not, no attention. Oh, yeah, yeah, uh, Sam Champion. He said, Calvin, have you given some serious thought? I've got three over here now. He said, have I given some serious thoughts about planting some uh, landscaping trees to block the sun from beaming on your new house? That would help keeping it a bit cooler. Yeah, I have. The engineer actually gave me three. But I'm going to get one that's, 
you know, a little bit older and planted. Not mature, but, you know, old enough. Yeah. Jerry, Jay White said Filipinos cooking red beans and rice. No. But, uh, you know, they, they eat rice with every meal. Rice is their bread. And sometimes you'll see people, I mean, they eat a lot of rice, not just like a cup of rice. They eat a lot. And then they'll have little pieces of dried fish around it. Uh, they little pieces of, you know, chicken to give it some flavoring. Uh, Alexander, okay, well, Alexander Neverman says, hey, Calvin, can you get charcoal water filters? I can, and I'm going to do that afterwards. Um because I don't want to confuse them and throw them off uh, track. And then a guy asked me, because I told him, I said, man, he said, man, they flying. Once they get that roof on, it's smooth sailing after that. I said, no, nah. I said, you forgot. You see that big mountain of rocks out there that they've got to move from there, from that pile into the house, and they're using those little buckets. And he said, why don't you get them a wheelbarrow? I said, no, nah, I would never do that. I'm going to leave them alone. I, mean, I would never do that. You know, they would take that as a as a put down as, as I'm trying to come in and cut into their hours. And I just let them do their thing, man. I'm staying out of the way. Pumpkin Joe's Philippine Experience says, my wife had a family member ask her to buy them a motorbike, which means me. Absolutely. Buying them a motorbike. I made things clear and so did my wife. I don't get those requests anymore. Yeah, you, you're going to get tried like that. They're going to try you. Uh, but most of the time, you know, like I said, I've never had that problem. And it's not because I've been lucky. It's just, it's just because most Filipino families, they won't ask you for nothing. But if you're going to take the girl out of the family, which more, to, more than likely you're dating the breadwinner, then you shouldn't have a problem replacing that money, putting it back in there. That, I mean, you know, that's fair right there. Most of the women we're dealing with, they're the money earners in their family. They're the ones that speak good English. They got the college degrees and stuff like that. So if you take her out of the family and you take that five to 7,000 pesos a month from that family that's struggling. You need to put that back, man. Okay. But I've never had that problem. I've never had no, I mean, just they've never asked me for anything, man. Hollywood Baby says, I'm late to the live stream, brother Cal. Good to see you, brother. And I'm glad Boobies is going to be all right. Stay blessed, man. Thank you, man. Because I, I tell you, Hollywood Baby, I was scared to death. I thought it was the big C. My man went there. Uh, Sean Richardson says, your comment, just staying out of the way, makes sense. It's enlightening even. even. Yeah, it is. But we have a hard time uh, doing that. We get in our own way, Sean. Um, Kente Dynasty says, do they have electric bikes there? I'm pretty sure if you go to... Um, uh, Manila, Cebu, and them big places like that. But I'll, you're not going to see anything like that here. Uh, hey, Eric Terry, what's going on, brother? Thank you. Kente Dynasty says, if you're thinking of dating a Filipino, you should determine early on if they are the breadwinner as you describe it. Yeah, but even so, if even if she's not, okay, and, you know, y'all together, now, now, this is going against the men going their own way stuff. And, you know, you, you know, y'all y'all kick it. Y'all like each other. But you see her family over there struggling. It's not your responsibility. But, hey, if you kick them three, four, five thousand while you dare pay, so that's nothing, man. You know, and it's really just a sign that of respect to the girl, for real. I mean. You don't come over here to the Philippines to be cheap, man. That's why that men going their own way stuff is kind of cringy over here, man. I mean, people over here are struggling, man. A lot of them, and the majority of them that you're going to meet, 
it doesn't take, you don't have to be a saint. You don't have to uh, feel responsible or obligated to do it, but it's part of the unspoken agreement. You know, you think that just coming over here and letting the girl be by your side and enjoying your vacation with you is enough. Man, come on, guys. That's not enough over here. Uh, M, 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 I'm in Eustis. I keep messing that up. I'm sorry, brother. See, Calvin, some guys from other channels seriously need to watch your videos. I try to steer them your way. <laughs> but, you know, you can take a, a, a horse. You can lead a horse to wild, but you can't make him drink. Philip Janik says he answered Lopez's question, how much is 7,000 pesos? About $140. If you take her away from there, even when you come over here for two weeks and she takes off work from two weeks, you need to replace that two weeks money, man, at least. Yeah, we got to say we got to say the word no, because. If you don't, if you say yes all the time. They're going to come with some unreasonable requests at eventually, Sean. And you don't want that, man. Yeah, Mr. Steel Palm, it's a great point. He said, Pinoy family law and cultural expectations for family to financially support. There is no welfare. And that's the way we got to look at it. See, remember, especially Americans, I can only speak for Americans because I'm an American, but we're 4% of the Earth's population, but we want to control 100% of the narrative. I just mean that we think that the way thing works in America, it works everywhere else in the whole world. It doesn't. And we take that attitude with us, and more than, more than likely, it's wrong. You know, we got to learn to be open-minded, especially when we come to these countries. Especially the Philippines, you're so far away, man. You're on the other side of the international timeline. Uh, Derek Greenway said, hey, Calvin, my wife and her sisters got played by their family a few times. Yeah, they're going to come to the family, but see, if you and, the, and your penai girlfriend or wife, she's going to come to you with that too, and then you let them know. Then you talk it over with her. You know, you don't want them. The reason I tell you to go ahead and support the family or, you know, encourage her to support them, it's because she's going to do it anyway. And you don't want her to do it behind your back because that really causes problems. That's when a whole lot of money starts leaving out the house and you don't know anything about it. So, yeah, you know, but, yeah, they, they, they'll do that. They'll ask the family member for something. And the family member will ask them for something. They, they would never ask you. A uh, blue John says a good man would do the right thing no matter what. Absolutely. And that's all I'm saying. You know, uh, you know, be something. When you get over here, guys, listen to me. If you don't hear nothing else on this live stream, hear this. When you get over here, be something that they're not expecting you to be. And that's a decent, respectable individual. See, they lump us all foreigners in the same basket. And we're over here for sex. We're over here to use them. We're over here to take advantage for them. You know, you can do that without being a damn fool. Okay. But you got to learn to be able to say no too. Yeah, MJB in the P2B said, they never asked me for nothing. My, they never, and I'm, I'm talking about in the 12 years, they've never ever, but Remember, I'm the type of guy, I'm like Baloo John. See, I'm going to get out in front of that. My son's mother, man, before she built them this beautiful house, they've got a beautiful house. Uh, I would say a 100 square meter house. The house is a 100 square meter on their land up there in Lina, uh, Naga, Cebu. But before that, when I first went up there the first time, I saw how they lived. The mother didn't have to ask me for nothing. I'm with her daughter. You know, I could have gave him a, I could have gave him 20,000 pesos and still would have came out with the better deal. But I shot her mother 3,000 pesos, man. It meant all the world to her mother. You know. And you know, 
it endured the girl to me even more because she didn't ask me for it. You know, I just said, here, you know, because I know it's the right thing to do. They don't have to ask me. I see them. They, they, Their dirty kitchen was their only kitchen. They lived in a, you know, y'all hear me talk about a 15 square meter. That's what I'm talking about. They lived in a little 15 square meter hut up there in the mountains. And it was 10 of them living in there. So I didn't have to. Uh, they didn't have to ask me for nothing. Yeah, uh, a man uses Balu John, shout out. Uh, Philip Janik says, I love my country, but the USA is second most hated in the world behind China. Number one, because U.S. citizens think they are better than everyone else. Thank you. And see, that's the attitude we have to get rid of, you know, especially when you come to a place like the Philippines. See, some of us have no business over here. Coming over here with our attitudes, man, it's not going to go well over here. You know, because some guy asked me, and I put it on here, he says, what do you mean act like a regular Filipino? Just act like you're not better than them. Don't act like, you know, you're too good to eat their foods. You're too good. You know, if you want to say no, say no. Some of the stuff you don't want. Yeah, but don't act like you're just too good, like you're better than. Don't look down your nose at people over here. Show them some respect. That's all I'm saying. They're going to love you for it. And that's all I'm saying. Yeah, we're hated now because we, we do. We think that. We're better than people, man, you know. And when 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 you all add it up, man, you're on that damn hamster wheel over there. You're not really that much better off. Travel Mike said these young women are taking just as much advantage of a foreigner as we are them. They know the game. They make the decision. After, absolutely. And we're not even talking about that. We're saying that a lot of these women will unintentionally spend your money for you. They don't really know any better. They think that foreigners have an endless stream of money. So, okay, since he's got an endless stream of money, I'm going to finally get a chance to get me a Louis Vuitton bag or a real one. Uh, I'm going to get a chance to go to Barack. I, uh, you know, I can finally, you know, take my family out to the beach and show them how much I appreciate them. Or uh, he doesn't know it. But while he's here, it's going to be my mother and father's 25th anniversary. See, they're not going to tell you that before you get here. That's a financial ambush. When you get over here, are you at tomorrow? You know, you be like, well, uh, she's going to be looking around with a long face. And you're going to be like, what's wrong? Well, tomorrow is my mother and father's 25th anniversary, and I don't have anything to give them. See, that's a financial ambush. That's waiting for you over here. It's going to be somebody's birthday. It's going to be somebody's celebration. Somebody's graduating from college. That's an ambush, guys. She's not going to tell you that over there. Because that way you can, you know, you're liable to tell her no online. And she's not going to want that. Uh, Dana Middleton said, Calvin, will you explain the difference between security bars and debris bars on your windows? Um. This is, you know, security bars, Dana. But it's like this. It's keeping an honest man honest. That's what Filipinos do. If you look across the street, they've got any house you see over here is going to have a big security fence, a big security wall around it. Some of them got bits of glass on top. It's keeping an honest man honest, you know, uh, not that they would ever break in your house, but you got to keep an honest man honest. And that's what this is for. I mean, you know, November will be a year for us being here. We, you know, I've been in St. Carlos City for two years. We've been three places. No one's ever even attempted to break in. But all three of the places had these bars and these a big wall in front, too. But, Yeah. A.C. King sounds almost like a Filipino's family. Expect the Western man to pay some kind of a dowry for the woman, maybe because of her value to the family. That's not uncommon in many parts of the world. Yeah, it's just an unspoken agreement, A.C. King. That's what they have over here. Travel Mike, I was explaining 
some other kind of way. I said pay to play. He calls it the unspoken agreement, which was brilliant. And I've been using it ever since because that really explains it. It's an unspoken agreement. And we're trying to tell you guys about it before you come over here. It exists. And if you don't want to pay, play, then don't come over here. You know, but when you're talking about marrying, dating a woman whose family has nothing, if you plan on doing that and then trying to get the milk for free without buying the cow, no. This cow over here is coin operated. To get the milk out, you got to put the money in. Okay. Uh, Mark Klaus, he says, have eaten the dog at Pagan Pangansanan. It's delicious. Tasted like beef. Take care, brother. Oh, wow. I've never eaten it, but uh, I had a neighbor in Zamboanga City. He gets drunk and he goes out and kills the neighborhood dogs. And, you know, it's just, it's, it's, it's sickening the way he does it because he skins them just like a, and he, you know, cooks them like he would cook a damn pig over here. I've only seen it once and that was enough for me. And, but he's, remember, he's the same guy that eats the fish out of that damn river that's on the other side. That's probably, there's no telling what's in there. Yeah, Roy Jones, she says, up to you to educate them. This ain't no fantasy. If they don't do it with Filipinos, they shouldn't do it with you. Yeah, but see, it's a different thing, Roy Jones. You know, you know, it's a whole different thing. You're not a Filipino. You don't, you don't get that pass. You know, you don't get to come over here and get it for free. Being a 45-year-old man, you can't come over here with a 20-year-old beautiful Filipino and think you're going to get it for free. That's just part of the game. Now, you can fool yourself. And if you're not going to do that, the least you can do is just go ahead and uh, sign the visa papers then and, and let her work. But no, you're not going to get that for free. Uh, the Cosmic Snail says, lucky my Filipino wife has been working her ass off doing multiple jobs in the U.S. She earns good money and appreciates the value of the dollar. I'm lucky to have her. But see, you're not lucky because that's how most Filipinos are. Now, if your Filipino wasn't like that, you'd be unlucky. But you're not lucky because most Filipinos are like that. They're, they want to work. They don't want you to do that. But when you first come over here, it's an unspoken agreement. Why should you get something for nothing is what I'm saying. Why should she do that for you? I don't understand that. No one has ever explained but that's our Western mindset. That's our American mindset. I'm going to get as, as, as much as I can for as little as I can. I'm sorry, man. Not over here. It's not going to happen. Carl Bunn said, Mark, if you say so, if you say the dog uh, um, tastes good, yeah, I'm going to take his, his word for it, too. But, yeah, the cosmic snail, you've got the typical Filipino. And I, I tip my hat to you because that's how it is, man. That's what they want. That's the reason why they a lot of them want to go to America, man. You know, they love that visa more than they love you because, you know, it takes a while for the Filipino to love you. But she loves that visa the minute you put it in her hand. Yeah. David David says, um, when I was in the Dominican Republic, I met a family who was lying about being Canadian. They told me they were too embarrassed of how the Americans acted, especially New Yorkers, they said. You run into that over here, man. And, you know, and, but, you know, you can't change people. And so I quit, you know, but luckily, you know, you, you still have some, excuse me, there's some good people in the world. See, because I had lost all faith in the human race until I became an insurance agent. And then, I started meeting some of the most outstanding people on a daily basis. A lot of them are just, you know, confined to their houses and, you know, they, they go from A to B and back. But um, it's some outstanding people still alive, man. And, and some of them are over here and they're not so cringy. But, yeah, some people over here are cringy. You know, uh, one guy says all Filipinos 
Filipinos look alike. He can't tell the difference. And I'm like, man, come on. That's embarrassing when somebody says that. And you say it loud enough where people sitting around you at other tables can hear you. Yeah, that's cringy, man. Yeah, Jacob Tanjay says at the Sunshine Crew, nothing is free. Even when you think it's free. <laughs> Bob Dylan said, I was just thinking maybe I would eat my neighbor's a noisy dog. But yeah, this guy, I call him Grumpy. He don't even know it. That's my nickname for him. Because he treats everybody else bad but me. Because he's bigger than everybody else but me. See? Uh Hey, my own Buntag. Yeah, it's still the morning. <laughs> That's the little girl. Yeah, Clayton, Mary, you don't get lucky. You get unlucky over here, man. AC uh, King says, here's a quote from, what movie is this, AC? Let me see. Well, I lost it. Okay. A quote from the movie, Little Big Man, dog is greasy, I'll admit, but most people would be surprised just how delicate the flavor is. <laughs> now, I have to take your, your word for that. Yeah, Sean Richardson, when you think about it, it's never ever free. But, you know, free in our minds is all I have to do is buy a plane ticket, come over there. Enjoy the best that this woman has to offer because that's really all she has. And then get back on the plane and go back. Now, you can't do that. Yeah, Brad Jones says, you're a John. You can leave the three at the airport and bounce. But see, a John doesn't meet women at the airport. So you couldn't be a John because he's not going to meet the woman at the airport. He never does that. That's rule number one for a John. Don't ever meet anybody at the airport. You're done. You're not going to vamp that. You're going to be stuck with the three for two weeks. And you're going to kick yourself. You're going to be like, damn, now I got to, I came all the way over here. You're coming a long way, man. Make that up in your mind. Get that locked into your mind. You're not going to Florida. You're not going to Cancun, uh, Costa Rica. You're not even going to Brazil. You're going all the way on the other side of the planet. You better have some damn good plans uh, set up, okay. You might not come over here and uh settle for no damn three, you know, um, and then have to go all the way. Then after you, you know, two weeks is wasted. That long eighteen hour trip with eleven hour layover is wasted. Um, it's crazy. Don't do it, you know. So you know. If you know, if you're fortunate enough to meet a six, seven, eight, nine, ten online, and she's going to wait for you at the airport, okay, do it. But you better make sure that she's a legitimate, because they can look like that online. They never look the same in person. Hey, Derek Greenway. Hey, Calvin, my brother-in-law asked to pay for his wife's hospital bills for their baby. It was his seventh child. I told him I didn't sleep with his wife. Oh, wow. Yeah, see, you know, uh, that's never happened to me, Derek. But I can see that happening, but it's just never happened to me. Raising awareness, love, power, it has the health of the people there. It seems like there's a lot of illness from what I've heard. Well, it's, it's a lot of illness everywhere, you know. Now, what is the problem over here? And, and it's this is something I read, but what I'm seeing, too, it's the diet over here. A lot of people aren't getting a proper diet on a consistent basis. So that's why you see a lot of small Filipinos. 50% of, of Filipino adults are not getting enough protein. And 90% are not getting enough calcium. That makes their, uh, their BMI shrink. That's why you see them little. But the minute you get them overseas somewhere and they start eating on a regular basis and eating the right foods, they blow up a lot of them. 
and that's the fact. Yeah, Mike, Mark, there's no free rides in this life, but if you come over here to the Philippines of all places, it's like going to Haiti trying to get a free ride or going to Cuba trying to get a free ride. If you really want the best that the Filipino has to offer, just come over and be a decent, respectable human being, okay? And you're going to get the best of the best over here. If not, you're going to have a hard time over here. Uh, yeah, BJ says, hey, Calvin, have you or anyone uh, you know ever had a problem or concern with the law over there that says an adult, especially a foreigner, can't have a Filipino child hang around them without the family? Yeah, it's a real law. It's true. They enforce it and don't do it. Go on there and you'll see the Norwegian guy uh, who was had his whole life destroyed. Uh, by doing that, taking the kids. But here's the problem with him. He had an eight-year-old, a nine-year-old, an 18 and a 19-year-old, which 18 and 19 are grown Filipino standards. A concerned citizen, which is basically a current over here. They're called a concerned citizen. Called the police and accused him, you know, of being with a child. They're going to take the concerned citizen. You have, you don't have a chance in hell. Just like he did. They locked him up. He was guilty into proven innocent. He got out on a high, he had a high bond. He got out. He flew. He, he ran to his country. He's never come back here. Paid all that money for his lawyer to clear his name, but he'll, he's never come back. He was guilty. Yeah, it's a serious law. You don't want to do it. John said he uh, took a little girl over here to the city mall. He was lucky. You know, and sees, and, and you know, I said, John, man, you know, you're all oh, I ain't worried about. It. Yeah, well, you do it enough times, man. You know, you lucky he was, you right around the corner from your house. Don't do that, man, under no circumstances. Jay says, hit the like button. Yeah, guys, come on. Um, Ram, Rag John Rock says, hit the like button, guys. Yeah, don't take a chance on that, guys. I don't care if it's your girlfriend's kids, I don't go anywhere with these kids by myself okay and you need to let her know if she don't understand the law it was written specifically for foreigners all right and they're going to enforce it and you're going to be in trouble and you don't want to go to jail over here i wouldn't let my dog spend a night in jail over here and that's a fact you know mr b61 says, i met a german guy that negotiates with the girl for a six-month girlfriend experience, settles what he will and won't pay her, her paycheck, birth control, mandatory, etc. Maybe he will hire her next year. Um, uh, settles what he will and won't pay. Uh, okay, her paycheck, birth control, mandatory, etc. See that you know, and that's that's a spoken agreement. You know, Mister B, what you're what you're really doing when you get over here and you meet a girl and you don't have that spoken agreement, you enter into an unspoken agreement where they're going to do the exact same thing that he's doing. They expect it. They're going to say, hey, you know, if you're going to get the honey, you got to have the money. They're not prostitutes. It's just that, look, guys, you know, nobody has to tell you. If I have to tell you that times are hard for a lot of people over here, then, you know, you're on the wrong channel. You need to go to another channel. Uh, like I said, it'd be like you going to Haiti trying to pick up a woman for nothing. It's not going to happen. Sam Champion says, guys, really, don't eat dog meat unless you are absolutely starving. Dogs, unless they get regular checkups, carry a number of parasites that can affect humans in a number of ways. Uh, and I guess the same thing you can say for pigs too, Sam. A whole lot of stuff, you know, but yeah, you're right, man. I wouldn't. But just because, remember, just because people don't eat dogs in America, don't it's a big deal in China, uh, South Korea, Japan, a lot of places. Hey, LeVon White, thanks uh, for the super chat. He says, the law concerning children the same in your home. You mean same home country? Uh, 
in my home. In my home, yeah, but not, you know, in America, it's like, it's really like they don't care, I guess. I don't know. But hell, I used to take my girlfriends, when I, my wife, who I eventually married, and was married for 18 years. When we met, she had a five-year-old son. And every day I take him to the bus stop when he goes to kindergarten, wait on the bus, stop with him till he cut the bus, met him when he got home. You can't do that over here. You'll get in big trouble over here. Uh, A.C. King says, uh, to travel that far for a first trip, I have to stay a minimum of two months and meet a lot of women in person before making a choice. That's the only way it would make any sense to me. And I try to get that over on guys. I say, bring as much money as you can afford. Stay as long as you can on the first trip. And don't settle for the first pretty face you see. But it's easy for us to say that, A.C. King. And it's another thing to actually practice that. Because what's waiting for us, many of us have never had any experience with. And I'm just going to tell you, it's 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 the real deal, man. It's it's it, you're just not ready for it. And in our minds, we're going to say, I may not get another one. You know, I may not get another one. This is the best I've ever had in my life. I'm not going to take a chance on you know losing it. See, and we end up, you know, getting our heads chopped off. Hey, Haitian gunman, thanks for that super sticker. But I always tell guys, don't, don't, you know, they're going to chat with three or four. And you chat with three or four or five for the same reason they do. Because you don't know if she's really serious. You don't know which one is going to be compatible with you. You don't know which one is a scammer. You know, you don't know which one's going to show up at the airport. So at least, you know, do four or five because that's what they're doing. My girlfriend in here right now, the one who I care so much about right now, I trust with my life. I go to sleep next to every night. Was chatting with three of us, guys, okay? I don't know how to tell y'all that anymore. I'm giving y'all my experience. I'm not making this stuff up, okay? The reason why I'm with her now and not, she had a guy, we call him Cheney Weenie. He's a... Asian guy, and then she had another American guy. They were chatting her, sending her big money over here, man. Cheney Winnie sent her fifty thousand. The American was sending her ten thousand at a time. He was the American was supposed to be here in June. Cheney Winnie was supposed to be in July. I was here in May. I was already here. I beat him to the punch. It's first come, first serve. But to her, it's like I just want to meet somebody. You know, I'm tired of the Filipino situation. I've had my heart broke over here. You know, see, they choose us. We don't really choose them. They choose us. But what we have to do is flip the script, man, and, and get to the point where we're choosing them. You're on that, you're going through that catalog on the website, and you think you're choosing her. Oh, I got this one, this one, this one, this one. No. Because what happens is once you send her a chat or a kiss or whatever it is, a hug or whatever they do online, it's been so long since I've been on there. I send her an email. She's got about 100 in there, 50, and she's looking at them. And she's making the decision, guys. Listen to me. Okay? You're not choosing her. We got to flip it around. We got to really start choosing and the only way you're going to really start choosing is when you come over in person and you meet them in person. Then you say, no, nah, I'm not interested. I'm going to go on to this one, okay, and blah, blah, blah. Take them out, you know, a few times. You know, like I said, drive them around the block, kick the tires a few times, guys. You know, you wouldn't buy a used car on the lot over there, but you're going to come over here and marry a woman you never met before, don't know nothing about. Hey, uh, Ingram Davis, thanks for that super chase. I'm a match Haitian gunman. You're funny, Ingram. And I'm going to tell you something, Ingram. Ingram Davis sent me. Now, see, he's learned his lesson. He sent me a picture of him and his girlfriend. And he's got a beautiful young honey. Okay. Now, I'd be interested 
to know is that the first woman you met over here? If it is, you're man, you you know, <laughs> you surely didn't get unlucky. But yeah, she's beautiful, man. <laughs> yeah, a Kevin Sam mix it up, what we call him Team Wing. <laughs> yeah, Haitian Gummy, he, he matched you. Yeah, they want somebody, you know, in real life. It's what they want. It's first come, first serve. They don't know, they don't, they don't trust that you're coming here until you get here. And then they don't trust that you're coming back. So, you know, she's going to start spending money for you while you're over here. She's going to get a return on her investment. And if you get, if you're any type of decent man, you don't have a problem with that. You know. Yeah, uh, Clayton Murray said, we got to flip the script. He said, you holding the royal flush against that pair of deuces, Jack High. But they end up winning all the time, Clayton. Because when we get over here, we're caught off guard, man. You know, if, if, if that girl that if, if, if Ingram Davis's girlfriend is meeting you at the airport, everything you hear on these websites, you're going to forget all about it, man. And that's what happens, man. You know. Yeah, Cheney Weenies his name, not Teeny Weenies, Cheney Weenies. OK, AC King, he said, I'm very disciplined, see. That's where you lost uh, 95% of us right there. And you're the type of guy that I did a video on before. The ones who win, they come over here, they're disciplined, see. He says, I have been involved with a lot of beautiful women. In fact, I married a beauty pageant when I learned a woman's looks ain't the final word. I learned to look past it. Yeah. And see, a lot of us haven't learned that lesson yet, A.C. King. Most of us haven't. But we can't even get past the discipline part. I got a friend up in Luzon. He actually lives in that fancy BGC area. His rent is 100,000 pesos a month. He's disciplined, man. He's never had, he's never been married over here. He doesn't have children over here. He's disciplined. But a lot of guys, man, we see that man like that, man. I'm going to tell you something. It's going to take more than discipline. Uh, and, and, and it's going to take a whole lot more than what we've got. Because I'm going to tell you, I saw my son's mother, man. I, I, I was like, shh, this is it. But you're right. You have to look beyond the looks. And that comes from experience. That's all that comes from. That comes from experience. And the longer you come over here and, you know, meet different ones, the more you're going to learn to look beyond the looks. Because she was... She was crazy as hell, you know, my son's mother. Beautiful. I mean, beautiful. If When Filipinos tell you you're beautiful, you're beautiful, you know. When we used to go to the immigration together, the foreigners, man, they tongues would be wagging. You know, but see, me, because I'm of the mindset, oh, all of the, you know, I didn't know what I had, really. I'm thinking, oh, I can replace her and get another one and replace her and get another one. No. A lot of times when you get over here, it's the best you're going to get. There's no upgrade. But until you've been over here a while, you're not going to realize that. Yeah, yeah, travel Mike. This is beautiful. He says, if you're talking to a peni online, you can bet your ass you're not the only guy. Why would you be? Why would you be, Mike? Filipinos aren't stupid. Filipinos are not stupid, man. A lot of the women you're talking to, they're college educated. They're going to play the odds just like you. Carl Vaughn says it's all fun and games to meet off a website until you see the local women. Yeah, see, he he's over here. Carl, is he's boots on the ground. He's, he's, he's bearing witness to what I already told you. It's easy to meet them women online, man. But when you get over here and you see the real deal, these just naturally beautiful women, man, you, man you're going to kick yourself. Because that three ain't going nowhere and that five ain't going nowhere. When, if you meet her at the airport, especially if you if she gives you the tune-up, oh, you, your goose is cooked. And then the next time you come over here, you better not tell her. She's going to hunt your butt down. 
Okay, Sean Richardson, take care, man. Thanks for joining us. I appreciate it. Yeah, uh, Frank Allen says it's not easy to, to replace a damn piece, Hammer. But in our man, see, we come over here with that critical Filipino theory that they're easy and, you know, they're desperate and yeah, we can have any of them we want and it don't matter what we look like. And it's wrong, man. It's not true. If you find you a beautiful woman over here and you get along with her and y'all fairly compatible, man, you better stay with her, man. You know, there's no upgrade. Chester Style said on my first trip, I started off with 10 dimes and slowly whittled it down to one after two years and four trips to the PIC. That's what it is. I mean, you don't have anything to lose, ladies and gentlemen. You know, remember the guy was on her last uh, live stream. He said, Michael Jordan said, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. What in the world do you have to lose by coming over here shooting your shot with a 10 because there's so many 10s over here. You're going to get one of them. One of them is going to be interested. One of them is going to take you up on your offer. One of them wants a new life and a better life. And it's going to say, okay, well, you're not that bad. I'll take my chances. See? But if you come over here with that same uh, mindset that, oh, she looked too good. I'm, I'm, I'm going to you know, we go after the women we think we can get. And it's going to be the same way when you come over here. You're going to go after the women you think you're going to, you can get, and you're going to cheat yourself. It's the ones that you don't think you can get. At least do yourself that, guys. Okay, just have enough courage because, see, what makes a good expat is you got to be courageous, man. You can't just come way over here. I don't care how easy you, it looks. And start a new life, man. It takes some amount of courage. Just use that type of courage to, you know, shoot your shot at at least 110. Let us shoot you down, you know. That way you know that you didn't die. You're not going to die from, oh, I'm not interested. Uh, you may say something to her and she walk right by you and you say, well, hey, I'm still alive. You know, it's, it's not going to kill you, Okay. Mr. Most Scientific says, my own boontag. Hey, my own boontag. Yes, it's still morning here. Uh, Jose E. Uh, Feliz says, hey, hey Calvin, I want to go there, but I don't know anybody. What am I supposed to do? He says, to get me a very honest girl. Well, what you can do is since you don't know anybody, because none of us know anybody when we come over here. I didn't know anybody when I came over here. Only the two women I chatted with online, but I didn't know anybody. But here's what you can do, Jose. And anybody's listening out here, it's easy. And John can bear witness to, that this will work. The hotel you're staying in, they've got staff. After you're there a couple of days, they're going to seem like they know you. That's just that Filipino sense of community. You just ask them, hey, you know, you got a sister, you got a cousin, you got a friend that you can introduce me to. Boom. That's all you have to do. I guarantee you're going to have more offers than you can handle. And that's a fact. Uh, let's see. Um, uh, see now, see, this is perfect. Derek Greenway said this. They say, hey, Calvin, these guys can't be desperate when they go over there. But see, that's the problem. Most of us are. I was, when I got over here, I was sexually frustrated. And, you know, Luckily, and see, I, I settled for a 41-year-old separated mother of four, even though she was beautiful. See what I'm saying? It was my first time over here. I wasn't ready for what was waiting for me over here. Imagine that now. I come all the way over here to the Philippines. I settled for a 41-year-old separated 
She wasn't even divorced. Her and her husband, her ex, well, the separate her, they lived in the same apartment building. He had a younger woman. Okay. Mother of four, but she was the most beautiful woman I'd seen up to that time. I mean, it, she knocked my socks off, really. But Derek is right about that, man. When you come over, you may end up settling for something if you're not careful. Luckily, she was smart, too, see, and she was honest because she told me, she said, Calvin, what do you want? This is her words. What do you want with an old woman like me? Most foreigners, when they come over here, they're after young women. See, I didn't know it because I didn't know nothing about the Philippines. I didn't know I could come over here and get a younger woman. Nobody told me that because I never asked. She told me. And that was the end of our relationship. We never was together again. I saw her like three years later at the mall and she was going through menopause and stuff like that. But nobody ever told me. I didn't know. So I'm telling you guys, you can get the tens. Nobody told me I could. Yeah, yo, yo, yeah, the real deal, Evan, the Holyfield, don't let your goods get cooked, guys. But it will, because you're going to come over here, pants on fire. You're going to see this young girl, you know, and you don't know she's got three kids already because she, she told you she didn't have none. And you're not going to be able to tell the difference, okay? You're not going to be able to tell the difference. It's not like over there. Remember I told you I met the woman with the biggest P in the world? I don't know how many kids dropped out of that damn volcano. It was like a damn volcano. I'm like, hello, hello, hello. And the guy told me, he said, man, don't fool with that woman. She's got a reputation for having the biggest P in the world. I'm drunk. See, in my drinking days, I said, oh, man, you just hating because you can't get her. Mm -mm. He was telling the truth. But over here, you ain't going to be able to tell. Uh, hey, uh, Q McCall. What's that? Uh, 10328. Thanks for that super chat. He said, the Peni I meet is a 10, but she grew up in the UK, moved to the Philippines. She has her issues, but she already had an American visa for my mom living in America. Oh, my God. Yeah. That's one of them, you know, you might just want to hit it and quit it. I don't think you want to get serious with that. That's a lot of that's a lot of issues there, brother. But you know, go for it, man. You might be the one that can tame her. Um, but more than likely not. It's just you just marrying a an American with a Filipino fight face. <laughs> that's all you're doing. Uh MJB and the P2B said, Why well, guys want the college educated ones? Just think what they had to do to get to college, something to think about. Yeah, and a lot of the women over here have college degrees. I mean, but what does, difference does that make? I don't understand. You're right, MTV. They want the, oh, I want the college woman. I want the established woman. You you know, they, they think coming over here and, and you know, they're competing with you. And see, the comp, there's no comp competing over here, guys. Leave that over there. I don't care. What kind of job your woman's got? That her job doesn't pay my bills. See, I don't care that y'all, oh, she's a nurse and blah blah blah. You brag on because yours is from the province, but yeah, a 10 is a 10. Okay, for well, anybody with that attitude, a 10 is a 10, a eight is an eight, man. As long as I'm happy, don't give a damn what your qualifications your woman's got. Your woman's not satisfying me. And, it, you know, it's just that simple, man. But you got guys that come over here and argue, oh, Calvin, you can't get a college educated professional woman. Well, I got one. I got one. Okay. But it doesn't mean anything. As long as I'm happy, that's what it means. See? Uh, Jose says, uh, Calvin, you think with $1,000, would I be okay there? You mean monthly, Jose? <coughs> Uh, are just for your two week trip here. Travel Mike said, Cal, my ex admitted much time later she was talking to two other men, one Australian, and I forgot the other, but I got there first, like you. Yeah, that's what it is. And 
that's why I tell, you know, people say, oh, uh, you trying to knock the Filipinos hustle by telling guys don't send money over there. No, I'm not. I'm looking after your best interest, man, because if you keep sending, I don't care how much money you sent over here. Okay. If somebody meets the girl and, sh and he's over here before you, and it's a good chance they're going to be compatible and he's going to do all the things that you promised to do. You're up shit's creek, buddy. You're done. That million pesos you done sent over here and all that and the, the college education you done paid for, all that's going to go out the window, man. You know, because it's no sweat off her back. She ain't spent no more money meeting him than she has you. You're the one losing. But they want to tell me, oh, I'm trying to knock the Filipino sauce. So, no, I'm not. You know. Okay, Bobby G said, working Sunday morning later, fam. Okay. Take care, buddy. Get a chance. Give me a call, Bobby G. Yeah, Mr. Vegas. He said, men need an abundance mindset, not austerity mindset. Uh, but, you know, we throw all that abundance mindset, we throw all these principles out the window when we come over here sexually frustrated. Uh, the closer you get to the Philippines, when that man says, you know, fasten your seat belts, we're going in for a landing. Uh, we'll be in Mockton in, you know, five minutes. All of a sudden, your pants get hot. You know, your knees start shaking. Your palms is itching, you know, because you know what's waiting for you, man. And you don't forget about what Sunshine Shoulder said and all the rest of the vloggers said. What did Calvin tell me to do when I get to the airport? You don't forget because you know what's waiting for you, man. And, it, you know, it's over because it's been so long, you know, since you had a tune up. Like I told guys before, when I got over here, man, my engine was backfiring. It was sputtering, you know, dying, you know. And, you know, you're like, the hell with sun, what Sunshine Shoulder said. She's going to, you know, she's, you know. And a three looks a whole lot like a seven to you and all that because she got all this makeup caked on her face. She done spent 10 minutes drawing eyebrows on her face because they don't have eyebrows over here. And you psyched out. Yeah, see, you're done. Yeah, John. <laughs> When your knees start shaking, man. When he tells you, you know, we, we, we've been cleared for landing, you're going to forget everything I told you. Yeah, Derek Greenwood, that's what I tell him. He, we should just, he should just hit that and quit it. That's too many. <laughs> One does a life set in the fuzzy dugout. You forget what your parents told you. Yeah, y'all gonna forget everything I told you when they said uh, that the fashion seatbelt sign comes on and you be like, yeah, we've been cleared for landing. It's over, man. I promise you. Oh, yeah. Avril Tatum McPhil, tell me something. Single person with a thousand a month pension can make it over there. Absolutely. Unless you just go crazy. You know. Uh and then, you know, I don't know your lifestyle, you know, but yeah, that's plenty enough. It's plenty enough. I'm living off less than that, you know. Uh, you know, that's the one good thing about the pandemic. It allowed me to save some money, man. I promise you it did. Uh, but I was living on less than, I was living on about $1,200 a month before the pandemic. Then once the pandemic hit, man, it went down. Sometimes, man, I don't even spend six hundred dollars a month here because you can't go anywhere. You know, you can't do anything really. AC King says, "I want a compatible woman. I don't care if she's educated or not. I'm not hiring her for a job. I want to have a good relationship and good sex with her. If I get that, she will get what she wants from me. And see, that's where I'm at, AC King." And that's what I found. I just wanted a compatible woman. She just happened to be educated. You know, I'm not hiring her for a job. I just want some companionship, some friendship, 
some good love. And, you know, I want somebody that I can relate to. And I'm right where you are, A.C. King. You know, but I've been here for a long time. The guys coming over here for the first time, that man said it's going to be totally different. Even if they say that's what they want, because they've never been here before, they don't know what's waiting for them over here. And I don't care what them women look like in America. When you get over here, you're going to see something different. You know, she's going to be exotic. She's going to be young. She's going to be tender. A tenderoni is what she's going to be. That should be your first one anyway when you come over here. Don't come over here for a 41-year-old uh, separated mother for. Even though she, I could have married the woman she was so beautiful. Don't settle for that, guys. Uh, and that's a fact. Yeah, Jeffrey Taylor, little three looking like a seven. That's when you know you're, you're pooky fat. Yeah, you spooked when you get over here anyway. Like I said, you mark my words, whoever never been here, listen to this. When he says, fashion your seatbelts, uh, flight crew, prepare for landing, watch how your mind is going to go blank. It's going to go immediately to her. You know, your pants get hot. Knees shaking, palms itching, and that three is going to look like a seven when you get off the plane. <laughs> I ain't going to read this. He said he <laughs> he's not going to. Mr. Vegas said I won't be able to fasten my seatbelt because of my boner. Yeah, see, that's what's going to happen. You All your blood's going to go there. It's going to come from your brain. You, she got you. you getting rich. She's going to ambush you. She's going to have a family and friends playing, waiting at the airport. And she's going to whisper to you, oh, don't worry about it. Wait till we get back to the hotel. Yeah, and when you get back, you're going to be about 17,000 pesos lighter, just like I was. <laughs> yeah, Jay, that's a, good, that's a good one. He said, regardless, take the woman swimming before you do anything yeah see you can get a look that's a cheat cheat clayton says yeah a tenderoni yeah and i thought i heard it all no it's true yeah that's what you're going to get over here and boy man you know like i said if nothing else happens to me ever again, if I never meet another woman, if I never go anywhere else, man, when I met my son's mother and my, my wife, they were 24. My son's mother was 25. She thought she was 24 because she didn't have a birth certificate. She was actually 25 and my wife was 24. I was 45 at, no, I was 46 at the time when I met both of them. I've been to heaven, man. I'm telling you, man. You're talking about a tenderoni, boy. Yeah, I said a tenderoni. Yeah, Brian Nichols at Hot Pants Syndrome. The minute they say flight crew prepared for landing and that seatbelt thing comes on, you ain't going to know. You wouldn't. you walk right past me in the airport if you saw me. You wouldn't even know me because you don't forget all about what I'm talking about. Yeah, Alexander Neverman, 17,000 pesos. Yeah, she's going to have her friends and family plan waiting. That's that financial ambush I tell you guys to look out for. It's it's going to hit you, man. Uh, Sam Champion said, Calvin, might be a good idea that Philippines is not open at this time. Since the 4th of July, all the U.S. airlines have had major hiccups. Uh through now, leaving passengers stranded in air terminals. Yeah, and it's a good thing, man. You know, for a lot of reasons, Sam. It gives guys a chance to save your money, get your plan together. You know, get offline, man. I mean, if you're going to use those, one guy said, I use the online dating as my, as an online strip club. Well, if you're doing that, that's fine. But if you're on there trying to find somebody to meet, you don't have to be on there now. The number one mistake we make, guys, remember, we chat with them too long. You feel you get emotionally invested with them. You feel obligated to take care of them, man. You make every mistake you can by chatting with them too long, man. Look, when you know for a fact, okay, that you're two weeks out 
or a week out. You've already got your ticket, your hotel reservations. Everything's a go. You're fully vaccinated, your passport, everything. That's when you get online. See, you don't get online anytime sooner than that. Because most of us are not going to make the sacrifices, the financial uh, sacrifice to buy the plane ticket, uh, come over here, make the trip, however long it's going to be. And, and, you know, and, and, you know, and we're just not going to do it, guys. So just wait until you at least a week out before you get online. Hey, Doug Greenway, thanks for that super chase. said, hey, Calvin, at the, end of the, at the end of the day, you still have to pay to play. Yeah, you, you're going to have to pay. You can't get something for nothing over here. Don't do it. AC King said, that's why I'm here listening to what you're telling us. I know you know what you're talking about. I want to be as ready as I can when I get there because I could easily make all the mistakes here. And that's probably why you want to, you know, like I said, you know, four or five, at least four. Because two of them are going to show up. They're going to get scared. The closer it gets to you coming there, the the um, more afraid they're going to get. They're going to get cold feet. They're just not going to show up. And then while you're here, they'll contact you. Oh, you get here, you know. The third one is going to come up with all kinds of excuses. Oh, I don't have a babysitter. I don't have a, you know, I can't take off work. But that fourth one is the one that's going to meet you there, and that's the one you you meet. But even with her, when you get boots on the ground, you still want to keep your options open. <laughs> Philip Janik says you can do your SRV online now. Then get an embassy appointment if you're willing to quarantine it. The Philippines is open to SSRV visa holders. Wow, that's a good plan. But then it's going to do you have the pin on your age? Do you have the 10 to no, yeah, the 20 to 50 thousand dollars? Unless you're a veteran. <laughs> Oh, man. Brad Jones says, I think if a 10 came up to me, now I would get sick. Then you really going to get sick over here then. Um, and remember, beauty's in the eyes of the beholder. A 10 for me might be a 5 for you, but when you get over here, you're going to know a 10 when you see it. And, you know, it's just that's just how it is, man. I mean, because, you know, when you, I was talking to a guy the other day, he was talking about any 36, 24, 36 over here. Listen, go and look and see what a 24-inch waist looks like. It's unnatural. If somebody has that, it's a one in a lifetime that you're going to see that. That was a song, guys. That's not real. If you, you know, a 24 waist, man, be somebody, hell, that'd be a baby almost, man. You know, but you can have a nice 26, 28-inch waist over here. It's going to blow your mind. Uh, Moshira Matano says, I'm guilty of a two-year long-distance relationship. Started before the pandemic. Met her and family. Got the tune-up, but not good vibes. Can't get up the courage to end it. See, that's what I'm saying. You feel emotionally invested. You feel obligated to hold on, but, you know, it's easy. Just come over here and don't tell her you came over here. To be honest with you, uh, you're not obligated. You're not married to her, are you? Did you get married online? Because a lot of you guys are talking crazy, man. Don't get married online. If you get married online, go on and unsubscribe from my channel right now. First of all, most of these countries, they don't honor that. And I mean, you, you know, you're not that desperate. If you're desperate, if you're that desperate, you're going to get married online. There's nothing I say or anybody else say is going to do you any good anyway. 
RLV, RLV said, don't be afraid to fail. Be afraid to not try. And that's it. But most of us, 98% of the population is afraid to fail. So we don't even try RLV, RLV. That's with anything, not just with a woman. That's with the job. We talk ourselves out of, we get scared. We're afraid to fail. But you see the most successful people in the world are the ones who aren't afraid to fail. They failed many times until finally, you know, they know what doesn't work and now they know what does work. But most of us, we don't, man, we're afraid of rejection. Hell. Yeah. Paul Smith says, do women hit the wall by 30 or 40? Not really, but see over here, by the time they're 30, in between 30 and 40, they're going to have kids. They're going to have children. They're going to have a family. They may or may not be married and separated or married and annulled or at least have had several boyfriends. Uh, and see, that's the thing about, that's the real life stuff you need to know about coming over here. It's because of their old fashioned culture over here. You know, a 30 year old, you're an old maid over here. If you don't have a boyfriend, don't have a family and stuff like that. I mean, it's, the peer pressure is immense over here. Uh, so it's best, you know, if you don't want all of that to avoid all that, to just, you know, you can get a woman over here at 18 is legal. You go from 18 to 29 or something like that. Uh, Rowan Troutman says, so what's going to happen with the tourist visa? Nothing. They're just going to rename it a two visa. There's nothing going to happen to it. There's nothing going to happen to any of that. All them new laws and that modernization, man, it's not going to affect most of us. And people are putting that stuff out there, man. It's not true. Um, and that's a fact. It's not going to, they're not taking away from the visa on arrival. They're not do, They're not taking that away, guys. Quit putting that out there. If you're in America, or you're in any of the countries where you have a visa on arrival, it's still going to be the same. You get in here with, a, with your passport. For, and it's good for 30 days if you're an American, then you extend after that. Um, <laughs> you already know, Sid, that's hilarious, Calvin. If you got married online, go ahead and, and unsubscribe. Yeah, because I can't help you. I don't think it's I don't think it's legal. I mean it's legal technically, but the US doesn't accept it, the Philippines doesn't accept it. If that's the case, yeah, you know, the doors would be wide open, you know. I know Frank Ellis. He says some guys are that desperate. They are. But I'm saying to hold on, man. Go somewhere else until this place opens up. Yeah, I'd rather tell you to go to Brazil. At least you can, you know, get a tune up and and white and nice beaches and, and beautiful women at least. You know, you're not going to get the Filipina tune up. But you can get the Brazilian tune up, you know, get the Mexican tune up and all of that, you know, but don't, I wouldn't waste my summer. I wouldn't waste my time. It's a lot of places to go around the world. I mean, real nice places that uh, you can have a great time, you know, until the Philippines open. My visa expires December the 5th, man. I'm going to be sick when I got to leave this place. But I've got an ace in the hole, and I'm going to play it. I'm going to play it. Uh, I, I got to play my hand, and, you know, um, there's a good chance that it's going to, you know, it's going to go through. But if I don't play it, then, but yeah, I'm going to be sick, man, happen to leave here and go back to reality, which is reality. This is fantasy here. That's reality over there. But yeah, if you worry about that hitting the wall at 30 or 40, just you know, go from 18 to, to 29. Because I'm gonna tell you, the first woman I ever got serious with over here, she told me she was 22, but she was really 18. We were together for six months. I was so happy she was 18, really, because I could have got in trouble. Because I was like, damn, what else have you lied about? But she was 18, and you know, and no one ever looked at us, you know, because you know, I was let's see, it was 2009. I was 45. 
Uh, you know, I didn't really, you know, I didn't look like some old predator. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, she was still 18, you know, and it kind of makes me cringe now when I think about it, but she was legal. And some men like that, you know, they like the 18. Uh, and, you know, and I wouldn't have known the difference between an 18 and 22 year old over here. You don't, you don't really know. You, 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 you really don't know. And they're legal. You know, it's legal. There's nothing illegal about it. And if I would, you know, if I was something, if I was somebody, if I could do it all over again, see, because I did it all over again. When I first got serious, remember my son's mother was 25. The woman I eventually married was 24. I wasn't coming over here. The lady told me, the 41 year old told me, said, Calvin, why are you with me? Most foreigners, when they come here, they use the date younger women. So I followed her advice. I sure did. And I'm not ashamed. She told me that. Hey, Dana Middleton, thanks for the super chat. He said, it's math. If you chat with a 10, a 9, and 2H, you should end up with a 8.75. Yeah, but what we do, Dana, is we we tell ourselves no before we even ask the lady. We'll say something like, oh, she's too good looking for me. She's not going to be interested in me. She's not interested in foreigners. I'm too old. I'm too dark. I'm too short. We'll do all of that. And we, you know, we tell ourselves no. See, before we even get up there. And then next thing you know, you see these guys over here because you're going to see them when you get over here. You ain't like, mm, they got tens. And you'd be like, what in the world? He got a 10 and I got a three. How did that happen? Because they went for the 10 to begin with. You know, that's that American thinking, man. You got to get rid of it before you come over here. You're not in America, man. Okay. Yeah, Mr. Chip says it depends on the guy's confidence. But you got to raise your confidence if you come over here. Why come over here and be the same as you are in America or in England, France, or wherever you miserable at? Why be miserable over here? Uh, Gary, let's see. Uh, he retracted the message. Okay. Because I'll tell you what, you were getting, that was some crazy English you were using, Gary. And that's a fact. But yeah, you got to raise your confidence before you come over here because I didn't want a new address, man. I wanted a new life over here. I didn't just want to be in the Philippines and just live the same way I was living in America. I wanted to live totally different. Yeah, yeah. Paul Smith, it's true, or wherever you're miserable at, because that's where we are, you know. And so you come over here, because I'm going to tell you something. I'm making a video, and, and it'll probably upload it tomorrow, because I'm getting my thoughts together that, you know, goodbye, Philippines, I'm going to miss this place. Um, and I tell you, I didn't, I wanted a new life when I came over, and I got one. You know, I'm happy as I've ever been. I'm talking about, I'm I'm truly happy. I came over here. I was miserable. Spiritually, mentally, physically, I'm not the same person that I was December 5th, 2018 that I am now. And, you know, what's the point? I'm defeating the purpose. I wanted to bring that and then go back three years later the same way. No. Uh-uh. So I took some chances because I didn't have nothing to lose. When you got nothing to lose from trying and everything to gain is successful, man, you better try. And that's why I tell you when it comes to the 10 over here. See, a lot of y'all guys, y'all sending money over here. She looks like a six or seven online. I'm seeing them with my own eyes. These is threes and fours y'all really sending your money to. Now, don't get mad at me. You know, don't get mad at the, don't shoot the, uh, don't shoot the messenger. I'm telling you, these, you know, they. They got all this powder and stuff on their face. And, you know, they're really threes and fours. Uh, John uh, Gomez said, no crying on the vehicle. But I guarantee you, it's going to be the, the longest trip to the airport I've ever made. And they all long when you leave here. The only time was when that girl squeezed my pockets, man. I was so happy to just make it to the airport 
I was so glad I had enough money. I think I had a thousand pesos left to get to the airport. I was so happy, man. Then when I got home, you know, I had just enough money left to, to go from the Greyhound bus station in Louisville to my house. But, um, but because my life is really, I'm leaving so much behind, John, this time, you know, um, and I'm going to play that ace, man. That's all I got. And it's an ace, you know. And, you know, I'm, I'm going to have to, you know, turn in my favors, man, you know, and say, hey, look. And, you know, and I should be able to get back in. Because remember, I'm still married. See, that's my ace right there. You know, we're not together. She's got somebody else. Obviously, I got somebody else. But, you know. If I buy you a, a, a round trip ticket, pay for all your expenses, you know, will, will you go over here with me to let me get back in? I've already talked to her about it. She's thinking about it. Yeah, well, once I get over that, I'll put the pressure on you. Uh, <laughs> you're going to do it. Don't forget, you know, like I said, you know, it's time to, you know, call in some favors. You know, I would never do it under normal circumstances, but I'm doing it now. Mark says, why do guys send money to women they will never meet? That's crazy. See, you have to ask them that. I, I try to tell them. I'm over here on the other side. I'm seeing what's going on. But they get mad at me. They say, oh, you're trying to um, knock the Filipinas hustle, they said. One guy told me, he said, you know, get out of the way. Let these girls, you know, they have a hard time making a living over. I said, yeah, but they don't have to take advantage of people to do that. There's opportunities over here. You see that engineer that's working for me. He's living a damn good life. And it's not just him. It's a lot of people over here. If you're willing to, you know, to sacrifice, man, you know, and delay your uh, gratification to later on, you know, and, and use this instead of always trying to use this and nothing wrong with this, if, and, you know, unless you, you know, if you can work with your hands, you you know, you'll never have to worry about having a, a job in your life. Hey, TJ Johnson, thanks for the super chat. He says, uh, what's that NGL? You young guys, man, y'all got a whole lot of, he said, uh, he's, I'm 32. I shot my shot at my main. She's 19. Not expecting much to come of it, despite being in the same industry, only to find out she locked on to me. Yeah, I see. You know, you didn't have nothing to lose from trying, TJ. Everything to gain successful now, look at you. You know. Um, <laughs> Cal Devin says, Cal going in backbreaker mode. No, uh, I'm just calling in my favor, you know. You got a new life over there, remember. Don't, don't, don't forget who gave you that new life over there. Just do that favor for me. It's no big deal. You know, your son's over here. I, I, my goal is to bring him back with me, but it's going to be tight because I'll be fully vaccinated September 1st. Then it's going to take, they tell you, three or four weeks before you, you know, get out there. And then I've got to take him to Cebu, get renew his passport. It depends on when his passport comes back. See, I want to take him back. Uh, Barry Curry says, when are you leaving the Philippines, Calvin? My visa expires December 5th, but I'm going to leave sometime mid-November. See, the house will be done, though. See, uh, long before that. Uh, but I'm going to leave maybe mid-November because, you know, you got to expect the unexpected here. I don't know what's going to happen. You know, they may... I may be positive. See, then I gotta, I can't go home. I gotta spend ten days, two weeks, or whatever it is. Um, Conan Ranger said, "Where are you going, Cal?" Well, I'm gonna have to play the ace. I'm gonna have to play the ace of spades, Conan. I'm gonna have to go back to my hometown. You know, talk to my wife. 
and play my ace, you know, and see if I can, you know, get back in on the ballot buying visa, see, because I can. Mark Schaefer said, Calvin, did you get the China vaccine? I did. I got the Sinovac, Coronavac, the good one, though. Remember, it's two of them. Y'all probably don't know that. It's two of them. Hey, Momentum L, he said, been around, just been busy. Oh, okay. Thanks, brother. Uh, Mark Coas, he says, if married Filipino, L and visa, brother. Well, I can get in with a um, ballot buy-in. Because, see, here's the problem with trying to get a 13A and all that. Then she would have to register our, our marriage, which would lock her in over here. She would need a, an annulment. And see, I don't want to do that to her. Uh, that's why we got married there in America. This annulment stuff is hard, man, you know, and it's expensive, you know. And see, that way uh, she doesn't have to do that. We, we're, we're just going to divorce. But before we divorce, get me over. I'm probably this. And I, she's probably watching this. So she may watch it. I'll probably file for a divorce the day before we leave. See, so we're technically still married with a marriage certificate when we hit the airport, see? So it's nothing illegal if the trolls and anybody's looking. I'm married. See? Hey, Phil, I'm a couple in the Philippines. Hello, watching from Dumaguete. Yeah, I got about eight minutes, guys. I got to get off here Sunday. We always go to the grocery store, and we really don't know when they're going to lock us down, to be honest with you. John Gomez uh, says, good things happen to good people. Believe that, Cal. Yeah, I, I believe that too, John. Uh, and I'm I'm gonna be okay anyway, but I don't want to get locked out of this place. This this is my new life over here. I don't want to be anywhere else. If I don't go anywhere else, I'm gonna be miserable. Even though, you know, I'm spiritually, mentally, uh, and, and physically changed. I'm gonna be miserable if I'm not here, because you know, this is my life. This is where my life is. I love it here. I've never been happier ever in my life than I am now. And, you know, my friends and family, they don't understand. They're like, well, you're in a third world country. I said, no, that's what you call it. You know. Hey, Iskandari. He said, good morning, bro. Saw the video with Ricky. Might have to take an L on them. Uh, I hear you, man. Uh, but no, see, Iskandari, Victor, we're doing this for the kids. And Ricky and Violet, they're alone for the ride, okay? And anybody who's seen what I did for Donna Faye and baby Denise, it was for baby Denise. It had nothing to do with Donna. See, I see a grown adults around her struggling all the time. I help them, give them a few pesos or whatever and keep going. But when I seen those kids, see, see, they, they're off the street because I took those babies off the street. That's why Ricky and Valet have a place to stay right now. It's not because of Ricky and Valet. It's because of those two babies. Um, uh, Carl Vaughn said, Cal, can you get in since you have kids? There's a special annotation you can get on your tourist visa. Well, I'd have to apply for that 9A visa. And, well, there's a couple of ways I could really do it. I could get in a back. I can do the ballot buying visa with one of my kids over here, my 10-year-old or my 9-year-old. But see, the problem would be getting going somewhere where we're going to be uh, welcome. See, I could take my son. And see, I don't have his, all the paperwork and everything that I need. See, I could take my 10-year-old and my 9-year-old. We could fly to Guam and then come back to the Philippines on their Philippine passport. But I'd have to have the birth certificates and all that. And see, uh, this is where the Filipino gets on my nerves. They always in control of all of that. See? Um, 
Yeah, John Gomez, it don't matter, but that's what they think. Uh, but what I'm going to do, I'm just going to do the easiest route, which is to go home and have her come back with me and do the ballot band visa. I mean, I'm just going to call in that favor. Like, you know, you got a whole, you got a whole lifetime of opportunity now because of me, the sacrifices, you know, that I made, you know, I'm just going to ask you for this one favor, you know, and that's not asking a whole lot. And she's a reasonable woman, really. Um, and I'm going to pay for your round trip ticket. You get a chance to come home, see your son. We go ahead and get his uh, passport renewed, and then he can go back with you or whatever. I, you know, I'll, I'll bring him back, whatever the situation. But, yeah. T.J. Johnson said that Sunshine Shows is the vow – just extended the liquor ban to New Year's Eve. Really? I take a temporary lockdown over that any day. Oh my God. See, I don't drink, but damn. Uh Rayo711 said, Hey Calvin, what would you suggest for first time to the Philippines? I'm gonna say Philip, I'm gonna say Cebu City, because you're gonna be on Cebu Island. And you can just go so many places, man. Cebu. Cebuanos, they're just more welcoming, man. That's just my opinion. I've been here long enough. I can say this. They're just more welcoming, man. You're going to get a warmer welcome. There's just so many places you can go on Cebu and you don't have to deal with a lot of the traffic. The cost of living is going to be a lot less. You're going to just get a, wel a warmer welcome. And, you know, there's beautiful women there. I'm Cebuanos, man. If you don't believe me, go on Cebuanos.com. I would say it's, it's more friendlier. Uh, because Manila's a beehive of, 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 of activity for a new guy, unless you really got somebody waiting for you there that really knows what's going on. Uh, go, go, to, go to Manila, man. Uh, MJB says, Hey, Calvin, how's Gail doing lately? I've been on Gail's case because she done got lazy with me. You know, I said, Look, we done did all this, me, we done brought you to the one inch line. And all we want you to do is write your father a letter once a week. She won't do it, man. So, you know, she's disgruntled. She's this, you know, she's disheartened because her father doesn't want anything to do with her. But I said, that may not be the case, Gail. He may just be afraid. Uh, Mark Richards said, Calvin, if you marry a girl, you're living with that way you can stay there. I'm already married, Mark. Richard, see, that's why I couldn't do that. <laughs> that's the case. And then I don't know if I could stay anyway because see, it, it takes a while. I don't know if I can stay while they're approving that by that 13A is in process or not. You know, the easiest way is just to play that ace of, of spades. You know, I don't see why she wouldn't do it. You know. Roy Jones said, when you stay at another country, you can't get back in the Philippines. See, I'm not even thinking about a plan B right now. My plan A is to go back home, come back on that ballot bank visa. If that don't work, then I'll start thinking about other places. That's my plan A. That's my ace in the hole. That's my ace of spade. And I'm sticking with it. You know, that's the least she can do. I've given her a whole lifetime of opportunity. I'm calling in that favor. You know, I normally wouldn't do it. Stephen Gagne says, how much would an Airbnb cost me for a month? It just depends. They run the gamut from the most basic where you can go to where the, where the backpackers stay for five, six dollars a night, Stephen, all the way up to some of these places, man. I mean, over in Lackawanna Island, it's 18000 a night. It just depends on what you want. But usually, it's going to cost you in Cebu. I've got a nice condo uh, community. It's only about from $18 to $30 a night. And you're renting somebody's condo. Aircon, Wi-Fi, cable, two swimming pools, weight room, uh 24-hour security next to a 7-Eleven, a bakery, a laundry, right down from a mall, five minutes away from 
from Ayala Mall, SM Mall, all the malls. Yeah, it's called Mavisa Gardens. All right, guys, we got one minute left. I want to thank y'all for all the super chats, super stickers. Um, thumbs up just for joining me on all my live streams, man. All my, all your support, your um, kindness, your generosity, support of my channel, man. I really appreciate it, man. And I don't say that, you know, it's a fact, man, because without y'all, I'm nothing. And I told a guy that today. He said, man, you're so humble. He said, because I answer his questions and reply to his emails. I'm like, he said, yeah, because these other um, bloggers, when they get to where you are, they stop fooling around with the regular man. And I'm saying, hell, I'm the regular man. I said, I never be like that. I don't care if I ever get a million. I promise you, I'm still going to answer as many as I can. Still going to read the comments and respond to them. I mean, Because without y'all, I'm nothing, guys. So if you're in America and beyond, before you go to bed, man, help somebody. It's midnight in America. If you're in the Philippines, you still got about six hours intensely go out. Boots on the ground. It's the real Mr. Gritty. Boots on the ground. Uh, Barry Carey, I'm going to answer this before I go. He says, what are you going to miss about the Philippines, Calvin? It's a lie. That's what my next video is about. But, you know, of course, my children. Now, you know, all things being equal, my children, of course. But I'm going to miss my girlfriend the most. You know, I'm going to miss the most. That's the top thing, the number one thing I'm going to miss. Okay. But I'm going to miss the people, man. They treat me like a celebrity over here. It's long before Sunshine showed us. And I'm going to miss the simple life I have over here now. Barry, man, I haven't driven a car in almost three years. My phone does not ring over here. The minute I arrive in Chicago and people know I'm back in the States, this thing is going to ring nonstop. See, and that's really basically in a nutshell, but you'll see it on my video. But yeah, my girlfriend's gonna be the number one thing I miss the most, you know, because we've got such a great relationship now. Let's just face it, man. The love is the best I've ever had, and I can get it whenever I want to. There's no begging, there's no pleading, there's none of that. She's you know, I'm gonna miss her the most. So take care, guys. Thank y'all. I'll see y'all on my next live stream. Look for that video, it's gonna be a good one, man.